so many people want to get rich and they want to make money and mm -hmm. do all this stuff. Let's figure out how to actually do it. Let's say you make a goal to make a million dollars, right? A great question to ask yourself is, who do you know that currently hits that goal? If someone's looking at their year and they're like, okay, I want to do a million dollars flipping houses, how open should they be to other strategies or other opportunities? Most people have a little bit of success. Like, bro, I should be doing this now. Yeah. No, the right scenario is. What's up, Wealth Builders? Today, we're talking goal setting in 2024, and I don't want to do this solo. So I actually have my partner over at Wealthy Investor, Brian Davila, on the show today to just have a conversation about goal setting and, you know, some of my big goals and things I'll be doing different in 2024. You guys are going to hear that first right now. And you hear from Brian's own experience about what he is doing to set goals and make it the best year ever for himself personally, financially, and everything in between. So what's up, Brian? Excited to be on. We did this last year, so it's one year from the last podcast. They let you on every year or what? Every year. Did you talk to the production team? <laughs> I just bribe Austin. Yeah. Hey, we really need to do a yeah, podcast. Yeah. We really need to do one. Put me on a schedule. <laughs> Here we are. Excited. No, you, you've been asking me about your goals personally. You're like, what do, what do you think about my goals? Yep. And I was like, well, dude, you know, like we have a way to do it, right? 100%. And, you know, it's just funny because I teach this stuff and I do it myself personally, but mm -hmm. I don't ever like push anyone to do it. Yep. I don't sit down with the whole team. I'm like, guys, I want you to write down your wealth goals. Yep. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I'm just like, look, if you want to do it, do it. If not, whatever. Yeah. So that's why I think everyone listening to this should grab a pen and paper and like, as we're explaining it, work through it yourself. So right. that way you could have clear goals. Yeah. So what sparked you to like, want to go all in on this goal setting thing? Yeah. So interesting question. So I was sitting at home on a Saturday and um, I was thinking about 2024, like, you know, what are my goals going to be? And then I saw Brandon Turner posted um, a video that he was in Vegas for his Better Life Summit. Yep. And I was like, hey, dude, I didn't even know you were having an event here. That's crazy. Like, you're not promoting much. And he's like, oh, it's only for Better Life members. But if you want to come, you can come. I was like, all right, great. I'll, I'll go then. Um, and then I spent two days there just reflecting and just thinking and just kind of like making goals. And for me, it was huge. Cause I, I don't think I really like did that this year. I kind of was just like going along with whatever was happening. Um, and I, I think it gave me a lot of clarity to just sit back and, and reflect. And then he asked a lot of interesting questions and I'm going to ask you them too. Okay. Um, and then I actually took the team to Brian head yep. and I actually forced them all to make goals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a goal setter now. Yeah, you guys uh, need yeah, to be too. They're all going to do. So I printed out some forms and we all sat there. I let the girls go with the girls, the boys, went with the boys and we all made goals together. Nice. Yeah. So it was fun. That's cool, man. So what did, I mean, I guess what were some of the questions that yeah. We're sticking out to you. So I'll ask you. So first, what we did was reflected on 2023. Yeah. So if I asked you, you know, or the listeners, what were some of your highlights in 2023? What would you say? Yeah. Um, by the way, I'll give what my answer is and I'll also yeah. give you my feedback on why this is important too. Mm -hmm. um, feedback wise, I was actually telling our all-star students this. I was like, hey, as you prepare for your 2024, you know, pro formas and goals and projections and all that stuff, um, you need to first look back at yep. this last year mm -hmm. and you need to look at, hey, what worked really good? Yeah. What did not work very well? Yeah. How do I do more of what works and less of what doesn't? Like, mm -hmm. that's the very basic yeah. premise of, you know, where to begin. Yeah. So as far as me, um, some of the highlights, uh, are you talking business? You talking everything? Just everything, yeah. Okay. Um, off the top of my head, highlight wise, um, you know, my son Judah was born. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were recently in a very bad car crash, actually, a couple mm -hmm. of days ago, mm -hmm. and you know, going like 40, 50 miles an hour. The the driver ran a red light, and they were going like fifty miles an hour, and we just collided. Me, Mindy, and Judah. Mm. And it was extremely scary. The worst wreck I've ever been in. Oh, really? And to have a four-month-old in it, um, 
dude, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's only by God's grace, but, uh, you know, the car Tesla got totally totaled and, Mm -hmm. um, airbags went off literally in the entire car everywhere. And I got out. Mindy was okay. Judah completely fine. Mm. I don't even have a bruise. Mindy's got some bruises, but Mm -hmm. you know, we walked away like literally good. Yeah. And the driver did too. So it was just a miracle. But, um, you know, I look back on that and that was, uh, not a highlight, but like, uh, a blessing Okay, of that man, dude, you know, had a, added another one to the family and mm-hmm. his kid's already surviving car crashes and <laughs> <laughs> he's a rock. <laughs> he's, his middle name's rock for a reason. <laughs> so, you know, that was a highlight, uh, the, the birth and you know, everything, but, um, business highlights would mm-hmm. be, you know, this year. Obviously, it's been a, a big learning curve on many things. Mm-hmm. Um, sold some businesses, shut down some businesses, yeah. um, you know, I've grown some businesses, mm-hmm. and I've learned a lot along the way. I feel like this year I developed more than I ever have in terms of the knowledge and skills okay. for the next level. Yeah. You know, the results may not be where I wanted, mm-hmm. but the experience mm-hmm. was definitely great. Um, so that was a highlight. I would say another highlight. Um, I'm in the best shape of my life. You there know, you I'm getting pretty jacked, if I must say. <laughs> Putting up weight, hit that 315 for five um, on the bench. Is that so, the most ever? Dang, there ain't many people that get bench 315, <laughs> period, let alone for five. Okay. No, I'm saying it. for you, was that the most, like, is that the highest you've ever got to? Um, yeah. I Before this, I had probably maxed out at 315 for like one rep and like super yeah slow everything i got (laughs) with your back yeah like my back's (laughs) off the bench and uh, it's like a squat (laughs) press um but yeah dude hitting 315 pretty easily so that's a highlight best shape Mm -hmm. um got a pretty sick beard this year so yeah that's a huge highlight you know before i never thought it was possible but don't let anyone tell you you can't achieve certain things you can grow a beard. Um, and yeah, I mean, the podcast has done great. It's just continued to grow our watch time, our downloads, everything mm-hmm. have gone up 50 to a hundred percent. So yeah, dude, I mean, there's a lot of highlights. Yeah. A lot of highlights. And it's weird because being around you, it seems like we lived four to six years in one year. <laughs> you almost forget. Yeah. Like you could probably keep going. Cause if you think about like yeah. the Cali wealth con, um, well, I mean, wealth con is actually a new thing this year. Yep. Like it wasn't ever called wealth con. We actually went through the whole rebrand this year. Yep. So uh, like January was like the official launch of the rebrand. Yep. Um, kingdom was wealthy new. kingdom got launched. Yep. Wealthy business got launched. Creator got launched. All those things happened in the same year. I know it's, it's wild. It is, how many it is Bi- a lot if you think about it, yeah. How many Bible studies are you at now? We have 50 Bible studies launched nationwide with yep. Wealthy Kingdom. Yep. Clothing. I got my own clothing brand <laughs> right here too. I forgot about that. <laughs> That's why it's wild. It, it seems like, like it hasn't been a year, but it's been a really crazy year. I think you're, did you move in this year to your house? Oh yeah. I moved into my dream home. Yep. Yep. I put um, a property under contract in Costa Rica for- There you go. Uh, like a second home, dream home. Yeah. You bought some apartments. You yeah, we bought some more apartments. I forgot about that. So how was it? I wanted to ask you about selling a business because I think you've only sold one, mm-hmm. right? Like well, I've sold a couple, but yeah. Yeah. Some are behind the scenes, but yeah. Yeah. So how was that? So the business I sold was True Books that people know about. Uh, so it was with uh, my partner, Matt. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting, right? To sell a business that you founded years ago mm-hmm. and- you know, literally from zero and to see where it's gone the last, I guess this would be the fourth year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's rewarding. It's mm. also just an interesting thing that I've now come to realize in business that there's always an exit mm-hmm. at some point, either you're going to sell and make money mm-hmm. or the business isn't going to work and it's going to close down mm-hmm. or the business is no longer going to be like worth your time and you have to just move on and However that looks, it looks. Mm -hmm. Got it. So next question before setting your goal, he asked, what would your 18 year old self be proud of? For this year? Like just Just you and um, how you did this year. 
than how I did this year, my 18 year old self. Um, if my 18 year old self never saw like anything up to this point, he just looked at my life today. Yeah. I would say, first off, when I was 18, what I was thinking about a lot, I was always thinking about having an amazing wife and family. Mm. I was always in that mindset, even at 18. Like most people don't know this, but like I didn't date girls. Like I, Mindy was my first real girlfriend. So, what did you date? I mean, like I would go on a date. Mm -hmm. I dated dudes. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> I said girls only. No. So, Mindy was my first uh, real official girlfriend because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I went on dates and stuff, but I just was like, dude, if I'm not going to marry this girl, then what's the point? Yeah. There's no point in it to like just mess around. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, at 18, I was thinking that way. Like I wanted to find somebody I could spend the rest of my life with and get married. And so 18-year-old mm -hmm. me would look at this year and say, dude, you just celebrated 10 years of marriage. Mm -hmm. You have three kids, you know, you've got all these things happening in business and social media. You're I guess, famous in a different way. Mm -hmm. I always thought I'd be famous and rich. Okay. That was always expected, but it's just totally in a way I wouldn't have expected. 18 year old me would be like, huh? Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So that was like an interesting framework when he said that I was like, I never thought about that or looking at my life through that lens. Cause my 18 year old self would be surprised that I'm like alive. Cause I was freaking, mm crazy out of my mind when I was 18 and I didn't think that I would ever make it to be like 21 or yeah have a family or any of that stuff so yeah you're yeah. and I I'd probably hear that for most people that they did not a lot of successful people are like dude I can't believe like I would have never believed I mm -hmm. and I still wouldn't believe that success has happened as quick as it has mm -hmm. but now if you ask me when I was 18 that'd be exactly like almost 15 years ago mm -hmm. 18 year old me thought I was going to be rich and famous with a smoking hot wife and a family, but it was going to be from playing baseball. Got it. So like on one hand, it's surprising what happened. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's still actually what I thought would happen. Got it. WealthCon's coming back to Vegas, January 8th to the 11th. Now, if you've been to our events, you know how epic they are. We have the best time, not only with just great content, great speakers, but we have a lot of fun with the after parties and the masterminds and everything else. And number one, it's the, probably the best networking opportunity in the entire game. We have over a thousand investors and entrepreneurs at each one, and this will be no different. In fact, this is gonna be my favorite wealth con ever. We've got some amazing speakers coming, people like Tim Tebow, Thatch Nguyen, Gabrielle Lyon, the list goes on. It is going to be an epic event, and I wanna see you there. So if you're interested in attending, get your tickets now because they will not last. Go to wealthcon.org and get them today. Everyone knows that my favorite way to build wealth is through real estate investing. That's the reason that I started Wealthy Investor where we've trained thousands of students. But here's the thing. I've noticed that so many people fail to get started in real estate because they're worried about the money. They don't know where they're gonna get the money to buy a house or flip or handle their renovations and things like that. And so they just never get started. I wanna change that. And that's why I created a brand new free course that goes over five different ways that you could buy houses without using any of your own money today. And I'm going to give you it completely for free. All you have to do is go to wealthyinvestor.com slash podcast. I've made it specifically for you. The moment you go to that link, you'll be able to go get access to it and learn how you could start buying houses today without any of your own money. And if you're somebody who already has a real estate business and who wants to scale, we want to help you too. You can click the link below and book a free strategy call with our team if that's you. And then the next question was, what were your what were some of your biggest lessons in 2023? So we don't say losses or, you know. Lessons. Lack. What lessons did you learn in 2023? <laughs> we don't say losses. We say lessons. <laughs> that's good. Did you learn that from Tony Robbins or what? That was uh, Brandon Turner. <laughs> oh, that was. Yeah. Oh, you learned yeah. that from uh, Brandon Tony Turner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, dude, I mean, so many lessons this year. You know, I did the presentation at WealthCon mm -hmm. and I actually posted it on social media. So guys, I'll, I'll link to it down below so you can watch the the 30 minute presentation about everything I learned. Mm -hmm. But, um, bro, how long you got, man? Because <laughs> we'll keep it quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, part of that presentation, just thinking back at it was like, number one, communication with Mindy, even though we're on year 10 and all that stuff, 
uh, because I was going through probably my hardest year in business. Like we talked mm. about, if you only listen to the first 12 minutes of this podcast, yeah. you'd be like, bro, this guy killed it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't tell you about all the other stuff too, Yeah, you know? And it was truly the hardest year I've ever had to go through in business mm. um, with financial losses from real estate deals, which by the way, I always say this and I forget to like add the caveat. I say, yeah, I did lose millions of dollars mm -hmm. in real estate this year, but number one, every investor got all their money back plus principal yep. on all these house flips. Not one didn't. And that's a very hard thing to do mm -hmm. um, for, I mean, I know there's a lot of people right now who owe people money and you know, look, I have compassion for both sides. On one hand, um, you can't predict that the market was going to do what it did, which is why I had to, you know, wear so much. Mm -hmm. But, you know, on the other hand, too, if you're invest, if you are putting up money in real estate, nothing is guaranteed. Yep. You know, like you put up the money, maybe you didn't fully understand the risk of what could happen. But mm -hmm. I also don't like this idea when an investor gets mad when things don't turn out yeah. perfect. Yeah. And it's like, well, I don't know what you think investing is, yeah. but it's actually not guaranteed. Nope. There's nothing guaranteed. Nope. So I see both sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say I lost a couple million, I literally myself had to write checks to close deals out of my own bank mm -hmm. so that investors who funded that deal, hard money lenders could all get paid. Yeah. And that sucks, but it was a lesson. 100%. Um, you know, on top of that, I had to close businesses down too. You know, that was tough. You know, once again, when businesses don't go the way you want, mm -hmm. you got to deal with the consequences from it. Sometimes the consequences are financial. Sometimes it's reputational. Sometimes it's lawsuits. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so to go through both of those things and to go through, um, you know, just trying to figure out how to navigate through this storm that everyone's in, by the way, Yep. right? It just so happens when you have way more going on, more things happen to you, Yeah. right? When you have more properties, when you have more clients, when you have more investors and you have more employees, like just, you just have more responsibility and that yeah. is what it is. So yeah. I don't want anyone to feel bad for me. It's just the reality of what this year was. Yeah. And going through all that, I mean, you've been with me for the year, so you can just give your own what you saw mm -hmm. on the outside. But for me, I felt like I didn't, like, I, I don't feel like I was stressed or anything. It was just mm -hmm. like, look, dude, this is what we got to do and yeah. let's do it. And I didn't want Mindy or anyone else to kind of bear the burden of dealing with it. It's just yeah. like, look, I'm going to just deal with it and it's going to be fine. But I was working more than I ever had worked in my entire life mm -hmm. and I wasn't communicating with her why. In her mind, she's thinking that I'm doing it because I'm trying to like grow the business and like yeah. get to these crazy new levels. And mm -hmm. that's how she perceived it. Yeah. Whereas I'm thinking, well, no, I'm actually having to do this just so that we uh, don't go bankrupt yeah. and like people lose their jobs and all this stuff just crumbles. I have to just do this, right? Just to survive. Yeah. And once I explained it to her, she got it mm -hmm. and she no longer saw it the same way. And so that was a huge lesson, man, of just communicating what's yeah. happening. And now, you know, like I said, thank God that <laughs> the year's over because let me tell you, going through all of that, mm -hmm. obviously I'm still here and I've never been more excited about the position I'm in Yeah, in December going into the new year of like the things I know, our resources, our assets, mm -hmm. the employees, the team we've built, the family, mm -hmm. my health, Faith, they're all just like primed yeah. and as good as they've ever been. Yeah. But it took me going through the fire yeah. to get there. And it's weird because I think from the outside looking in, most of the time I knew about the fires. I didn't know about all the fires, right? Because I don't know everything that's happening in all the businesses all the time. But you didn't complain. You didn't cry. Like I could tell sometimes there was something bothering you, but you wouldn't talk about it. I think only like twice this year, you like openly spoke to me about some issues. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting because I think people look at you and they're like, he has everything figured out. He has a perfect life. He's jacked. He has this. That's, right. That's all that matters shoes. though. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay at golf. <laughs> and uh, 
but they don't they don't see all the losses and yeah. even for myself being in real estate you experience actually 10 times lo- the amount of losses than wins mm-hmm. right it's like you you put an offer on a on a deal you didn't get it this contractor ripped you off this tenant yeah. doesn't want to pay this 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 but then when a big flip sells it's exciting and it's great and you post about it and everyone just sees that. They don't see all the small losses that you're taking every single day. And at your level, you're taking freaking micro losses multiple times a day, mm-hmm. but it just doesn't phase you. No, not at all, right? You know, you you go spend all this money on marketing and it doesn't yeah. pan out. You go and hire this person and they don't turn out to be the way you thought. Mm-hmm. And I guess for me, right? It's just expected. So it's not like stressful or mm. um, surprising. Got it. You know, I remember I told you, I won't name names, but like, I was like, hey, you know, this isn't going to work out, right? Yeah. And you're like, then why are we even doing it? Yeah. And I go, because at the end of the day, if it works out great, like the odds though are very low yeah. that it will work out. But if it mm-hmm. does work out, then mm-hmm. the reward is great. Yes. And I was like, so I'll take that bet. Mm-hmm. But in, in every bet I take, aka risk or decision I make, there's always risk and reward. Yeah. And so I go, hey, the reward is really good if it works out, but mm-hmm. the odds of it actually working out are slim. Yeah. And I go, but what's the downside to doing this? And I yeah. go, the downside's very low. Mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, we'll have learned something. And then we'll be able to decide what to do after that. Yeah. Okay. So let's transition to making goals. So, um, you, you teach everyone how to live the wealthy way, Mm -hmm. right? So that means like setting wealthy goals. Yeah. So can you explain like wealthy? Yep. So, you know, for those who don't know, maybe it's your first time tuning in or (laughs) you've been a long time tuner or, and I just never talk about it. So you don't know. So (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, to me, the wealthy way is something that uh, has evolved over time. You know, initially when I wrote the book, literally like a year ago today, mm-hmm. um, I put it as an entrepreneurship book mm-hmm. because it's for what I thought, entrepreneurs and business owners. And, you know, I was on Omar El Takori's podcast and he goes, Ryan, you know what you are? Like where your books really belong? And I go, what? He goes, in like productivity and, mm. you know, even self-help. And I was like, self-help? I'm not one of these freaking self-help gurus. I have tactical things. I'm not like trying to get you hyped. Yeah. And, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, yeah, no wealthy, wealthy way is a true like system of productivity, Mm -hmm. of goal setting, of time management, of understanding your priorities. And I was like, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. I should change the genre. Yeah. (laughs) I could actually probably climb the charts quicker, (laughs) (laughs) but, um, you know, The wealthy way is this, you know, at the end of the day, so many people want to get rich and they want to make money and Mm -hmm. do all this stuff. And so they're told by social media that you got to grind it out. You got to go and put in all these hours at work and sacrifice all these things. You got to have sleepless nights. You've got to just do whatever in order Mm -hmm. to get rich. And I'm like, I don't know, man, I didn't do any of that. Like, I'm just going to tell you how I did it and try it for yourself. Yeah. And I always tell people, I'm like, look, go ask Mindy. We've been together or we've been married for 10 years and we were broke when mm-hmm. we got married. And ask her, how often was Ryan working 80 hour weeks or mm-hmm. on the weekends mm-hmm. or, you know, staying at the office till nine? Yeah. You know, like it didn't happen ever. Mm-hmm. And it still doesn't happen to this day. And mm-hmm. like at the end of the day, if I become a billionaire, or whatever, then I'll, you'll have seen the whole thing yeah. firsthand that mm-hmm. it's possible. And so people started to ask me what you said, and they were like, hey, dude, how? Mm -hmm. How do you manage businesses and your faith and your family and your health? And like, how? How can you do it all? And I go, well, I've never really thought about how I do it. I just kind of like have naturally Mm -hmm. done things that I think are smart. Yeah. And so I just made a formula, and it became the wealthy way. Mm Mm-hmm the way that I believe to building true wealth, not wealth mm-hmm. just in money, but in all aspects of life. Mm-hmm. And so part of that starts with goal setting, mm-hmm. right? Understanding, hey, well, what are the goals and things in my life to strive for? Yeah. When most people make goals, it's simply, 
usually money related and business yeah. related and whatever. And I said, well, that's only one aspect of wealth. Like that's, mm -hmm. you're still missing all these other things. Mm -hmm. So I created an acronym to help people set goals. And the acronym is surprise wealth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I, you would have probably never guessed yeah. it <laughs> with, you know, wealthy investor <laughs> and creator, you know, but it's wealth. Okay. And I know people might be writing stuff down. Yeah. You can actually go to the app store right now mm -hmm. and download the Wealthy Way app. It's yeah. completely free. Um, and it has a planner built in for you to track your goals. Yeah. And truthfully, it's not for you. I built it for me. Yeah. Um, and I just let people use it. And you use it. I use it every day. Yep. So anyways, <clears throat> um, what wealth stands for is the W is worship. The E is for education. The A is for affluence. L is for lifestyle, T is for team, H is for health. Mm -hmm. And so what I like to do is create one or two goals that are most important to me in each of those aspects. Mm. Okay. So let's go through them and I'll share mine too. So okay. first is worship. Yep. This one was a little confusing to me because I'm like a brand new to the Christian lifestyle. And I'm like, okay, like how do I make a worship goal? Is it like, by the way, that was also at the top of my highlights is seeing you get baptized 100%. and me and Chris being able to baptize you at church. And, you know, like honestly, and people may be thinking I'm like fronting, but the truth of the matter is if you would ask me, would you have rather saw Brian get baptized or have done any of those other accomplishments? Mm -hmm. I would have been like Brian getting baptized. That's crazy. I would, I 1000% would say that. Yeah. And, and I would fully mean it. You could put a polygraph on me or whatever. Yeah. Actually, I take that back. That would have been number two. I would yeah. rather still took Judah, but you're two. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm thinking yeah. of Judah. I'll take that. Yeah. But, um, and we can talk about that later because yeah, I think a lot of people see you as like this hard person, but you're actually soft on the inside. <laughs> but then people are like soft, confused. Soft, squishy marshmallow. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a Bible verse for that. What is it? The Bible verses, be wise as a serpent. Mm-hmm. And soft as a dove. Okay. Or gen be as gentle as a dove. Mm. And basically what that means is that, you know, the world is full of many serpents and mm -hmm. cunning and, mm -hmm. you know, very uh, cutthroat people. Yeah. You must be as wise as them, if not wiser or else mm -hmm. you're going to get eaten. Yeah. But at the same time, you still also need to be able to be gentle and have compassion and love and mercy. Yeah. But you choose when you want to use it. Yeah. I think I've, I've been able to do the serpent part where I can be hard, <laughs> I can be hard and cutthroat. Yeah. And then I got, I, this year I did work on being more dove like and forgiving and yeah. softer and listening more and all that stuff. But, um, well, so but, worship goals. Yeah. yeah. But let me add to that too. Cause mm -hmm. like so many people look, I have no problem stepping on your throat. Mm -hmm. Like I, want to destroy my competition. There's yeah. no, everybody needs to know. I'm not one of these guys who's like, let's collaborate. <laughs> There's no such thing as competition. I always say that's like, that, that's a lie. That's just lying. Yeah. Okay. There's always competition. Mm -hmm. Now, can I team up with my competition? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but only if it's mutually beneficial. Mm. I'm not over here. Just, Hey, competition. Here you go. Yeah. Here's everything. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, nah, dude. Like if it's mutually beneficial as competitors, then great, let's do it. Why do you think um, NBA teams come together at the all-star game or uh, for the Olympics? Yeah. It's mutually beneficial. We're going to go win the championship together because mm -hmm. we need all of us in order to go beat that country. We have a yeah. new competitor that we want to go put our throats, you know, stomp their throats. Yeah. Okay. At no point is LeBron ever just go telling whatever team that they're playing that here you go, man, like. I'll just go score it in your basket for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that's mm -hmm. stupid. So you do need to um, have this attitude of look, dude, I'm coming yeah. to perform with excellence. I want to take your cookies. Yep. If we're competing, I want to take your clients. I want to, I want to win. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I want to do it with integrity. I want to do it with mm -hmm. excellence and gentleness and mm -hmm. everything else but make no mistake of what I want to do. Yeah. And I tell them that to their face. It's like Tom Brady. I don't know if you watch Tom Brady with uh, Patrick Bad David. What did he say? It's pretty much the same thing. He was, I think, uh, what's the lineman? Uh, 
Ken, uh, Osama can can sue or something like that. Oh yeah. Nadama Kong sue. Yeah. Something like that. Where yeah, yeah. like dirty player. Yeah. Yeah. Where, uh, you know, Tom Brady would try to be nice to the D linemen whenever they hit them. Like, Hey, stay out of my backfield and try to like butter them up. So exactly. they wouldn't like be more motivated to exactly. hit him. And he said, um, he tried to do that with him and he, he hit him. He turned around after Tom said, Hey, stay out of my backfield. He was like, Hey, I'm not your friend. Yeah. And, and Tom was like, okay, I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> but so, then you do have mutual respect where you're like, Hey, yeah, I right, dude, I like that. Exactly. If you're watching this show. My guess is you're probably an entrepreneur who's trying to grow your business. And for me, the best thing I ever did to grow my business was build my personal brand on social media. It's allowed me to get more revenue. It's allowed me to raise more capital and it's allowed me to hire better talent. And if you are not currently creating content for your brand, you're missing out and your competition is. So if you want to learn to grow, my advice is to create a podcast. Now, there's a lot that goes into building a podcast and why I believe it's the best way. So I've actually created a free training that I want you to go check out. If you go to panadamedia.com slash podcast, you can go access the free training right now and see how a podcast is going to be the best decision to grow your personal brand today. So go check it out by clicking the link below and I'll see you in the training. So for worship goals. Yeah. So if someone's a Christian or, yeah, let's start with someone that's already a Christian. How do they make a worship goal? Is that yeah. like going to church every Sunday? Is that? Yep, I like this question. So first off, I'm a believer in SMART goals, right? Mm -hmm. um, for those who don't know what a SMART goal is, it's gotta be specific. It's gotta, which means, hey, it's not like, I wanna be a better Christian. Yeah. That's not specific. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's gotta be measurable. So like, hey, there's got to be like a number attached to this, mm -hmm. okay? It's got to be um, attainable. So mm -hmm. I don't want you to say, yeah, I'm going to be a, uh, I'm literally going to fast for uh, every day next year. Right? Yeah. It's not attainable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's got to be relevant. Like mm -hmm. don't do a goal that doesn't benefit you. Yeah. Just because you want to like do something. Mm -hmm. And then T is it's got to be um, time bound. Yeah. Okay. So for us, my goals are always year. Mm -hmm. So, hey, I'm going to, this is my, my goal for the entire year. Now, with worship, this would just be anything on the faith and spiritual side. So mm -hmm. some examples of goals you could make. Hey, if you've never fasted before, I think it's a great thing, right? Mm -hmm. So you can just say, hey, you know, this year, um, I want to just try fasting once if it's like mm -hmm. new to you, mm -hmm. right? Or you can say, hey, like I want to fast once a quarter for however long mm -hmm. I feel like doing it, right? But as long as I fast at least once a quarter, I'm good. Or mm -hmm. once a week or whatever, right? That's just a, a quick one. Uh, maybe you say, hey, I want to read the whole Bible this year. Mm -hmm. That's a great goal. Maybe you say, hey, I want to start attending church this year mm -hmm. um, regularly. That's kind of vague. Yeah. But like still, like, hey, every week I'm in town, I want to go to church. Mm -hmm. Maybe you say, hey, I want to join a Bible study this year. Mm -hmm. Hey, I want to go on three mission trips or one mission trip. Mm -hmm. Those are what I would say are worship goals. Got it. And do you have a worship goal for 2024? Yeah, I actually wrote out my goals. I'll tell you my goals right now, man. Let me pull them up. I don't want to misquote you, but uh, yeah, I've had many worship goals over the years. Oh, part of worship goals are donating too, mm -hmm. you know, generosity. Yeah. And so I do have a donation goal. Um, I don't want to publicly say it, because it's not really about that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'll, I'll just give like a, a figure. Like next year, one of my goals is to give seven figures plus. Okay. I won't say how much it is, but that is one of my worship goals. Yeah. Okay. And um, I think you said something about like donating all the money you make from, um, what was it? Like golf and all these other things that you do towards yeah. worship. Yeah. And that's part of it. You know, so it's like, just for Christians or anyone out there, I think that donating is a massive part of what we should do just as mm -hmm. humans. Mm -hmm. um, God commands it mm -hmm. if you're a Christian. Yeah. And so for, if you're one of these Christians who's like, I don't believe in the tithe and that's an Old Testament thing, I would say, well, dude, you just don't even get it. Like you've, mm. you're so far off the mark of like, mm. sure, do you have to do it? Well, like you could make any justification not to do it, mm -hmm. but your heart's already jacked up. Yeah. Like if you 
are fighting giving. Yeah. You already have, like, you need to check yourself. Yeah. Right? So I'm a big believer in tithing. Mm -hmm. um, I've been tithing at least 10% um, mm -hmm. ever since I was probably 18 years old. Yeah. And was it always easy? No. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I remember when I was making 1200 bucks in baseball, I was still, pay you know, I was still tithing 120 bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah. <laughs> that was tough. But you know what's even tougher is when you actually do make like your first big check. I remember I made my first big check on a house flip, right? Uh -huh. 25,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at it and I was like, wow, I would have, like, I'm supposed to give $2,500. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is probably the most anyone's ever given to church. <laughs> like <laughs> in my mind, I'm just like, I'm thinking this is a crazy <laughs> amount of money. <laughs> and, um, you know, I started to sense Satan creeping in mm. and trying to say, well, dude, like you don't need to give that much. Like they yeah. don't need that. The church is just fine. Mm -hmm. Or him saying, well, you know, with that money, you could actually go and spend on marketing and getting another deal. Yeah. And then, you know, like roll it into the next deal. And then yeah. by the end of the year, then you could do it. Mm. And I've actually seen a lot of guys ask me that question. And then finally, um, I had waited like a day mm -hmm. and I was like very conflicted because really? I was just like, man, dude, this is so much money. Like, and I, and then I, you start doing the justification <clears throat> in your mind of like, well, what about after taxes and what about yeah. all these questions? And that's always Satan creeping in. Mm. And finally I, I ended up, somebody ended up convicting me. Something happened and God always does this. Yeah. I don't even remember what it was, but right when they said that, I was like, dude, all right, I'm an idiot. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving the full 2,500. I don't care about taxes. I don't care about, yeah. you know, rolling it into another deal. I don't care about waiting until Sunday when it's church. I'll just give it right now, this very moment, mm. you know, on the app. Wow. And that's what I did. And it was hard. But then every time thereafter, it was just like a habit. Yeah. And I'll tell you too, you know, I've net a million bucks in a month. Mm -hmm. And you know, the first time I've ever had to give six figures in one thing yeah. is interesting, right? And I'll, I'll be honest, when I did that, it was not like as hard mm. because once you just like build the muscle over and over again, yeah. it's like, no, dude, this is just what I do. Yeah, And I can tell you if I make 10 million and I give a million, then I'm not going to blink. Yeah, And people are like, well, that's easy to say. You know, if you make that much money, then it doesn't mm -hmm. mean anything. Well, no, it's not. Because let me tell you, if you make $10 million, you are paying 40 to 50%. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you do give a million, just know you're actually giving 20%. Mm -hmm. And you still got lifestyle. You still yeah. got other things and you got all this crap. There's many reasons not to. Yeah. Most rich people are not generous. Mm -hmm. And if you can't figure out how to give $120 on the 1200, mm -hmm. you ain't figuring out how to give thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. You yeah. just won't. Yeah. And it's wild because I've known you for a long time and I didn't even know any of that. <laughs> no, and I don't ever, I don't ever talk about it, but it's just like, I talk about it in Bible study actually, Yeah, because it's something that these business guys go through mm -hmm. and they're earnestly trying to be more generous, but they have these questions and they're like, should I give post-tax or pre-tax? Should I like, Ryan, you have so many businesses. How do you figure it out? And I was like, mm -hmm. guys, here's how I do it. First off, I'm trying to pay no tax. So yeah. I'm going to assume I'm good enough mm -hmm. to pay no tax. Yeah. Okay. And so oh, what I do is just once a month, I get my P&Ls from all the businesses. Mm -hmm. I just look at the combined number and that's what I'm going off of. I don't worry about the taxes. I don't worry mm -hmm. about anything. Yeah. And I just give. And it's just once a month like that. Got it. And- uh, Pastor Jabin had, he told a really good story about his daughter, uh -huh. um, how he took her to Chick-fil-A and then, um, supposedly he was eating a salad. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, yeah. <laughs> so it's probably a made up story. Just, yeah. Okay. Just kidding, Jabin. <laughs> but, um, uh, he was eating his salad and he asked his daughter for a French fry. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. his daughter just covered the French fries with her. <laughs> and he was like, you know, my daughter, you know, I paid for those French fries <laughs> and I've bought in my daughter food for her whole life. And I will pay for the, her food for the rest of her life. Yeah. I, I will do everything for my daughter. 
but she wants to hold on to this French fry. Yeah. And he related it to, you know, paying your tithe. Giving. Yeah. With God. It's like God, you know, invented potatoes, but for some reason <laughs> we're, we want to hold on to our French fries and not give back to them. Yeah. And when he said that, I was like, that makes so much sense yeah. that, um, yeah, it just, it just cleared everything up for me. No, a thousand percent. And, um, I'll tell you this. It is one thing that as a, a believer, even for me, I'm still not like people would be like, dude, you're generous. And I'd be like, well, and people wouldn't say that like if they don't know me, mm -hmm. but like a guy like Jabin or these guys who mm -hmm. they know what I'm doing, they'd be like, dude, like you have the heart of generosity. And I would look at me and I would say, well, I, I guess like in terms of just being obedient, sure. And doing the minimum, sure. Mm -hmm. Like that part's easy. Mm -hmm. I go, but when I hear about these guys who are giving away 50%, 80% of what they make, mm -hmm. I'm not there. Yeah. And so to me, I'm like, until I'm at that level where I can fully just say, you know what, dude, I don't need any of my fleshly desires. Yeah. I just want to give it all away. Mm -hmm. Then I haven't reached that point. Got it. So next would be education. Oh, and let me add too. Yeah. Like I only talked about giving. My other goal yeah. was we want 250 Wealthy Kingdom Bible studies next year. 250. Yeah. And you're at 50 right now. Yeah. We got, got a 5X. It. And then you want to have like a Wealthy Kingdom event. Yeah. Yep. But that's already going to happen. So it's yeah. not even a goal. Like yeah. it's already done. So <laughs> I don't put goals where I'm like, well, duh. That's yeah, easy. Yeah. You're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to make it a goal. Got it. Was there anything else for worship? No, like I said, I want to just like really be hyper focused on one, two, I mean three max. Yeah. In a category. Got it. And then what about education? Well, what's your worship goal? My worship goal is I want to lead my wife to Jesus. Number one. Um, I want to tide two hundred thousand dollars this year. Mm. And this was the first year I've ever tied ever in my whole life. So you're just going all in. Yeah, I'm just going all in. Um, I want to serve on two mission trips. I want to read the Bible every day. And that's actually something I've been able to do right now. So what I've been doing is as soon as I wake up in the morning and I check my phone, mm -hmm. I just go to the Bible app and start yep. reading. And that's been like very helpful for me. Or even at night, when I'm, whenever I catch myself just on TikTok or Instagram, yeah, just go to the Bible app and then just start reading. Yeah. So that's helped a lot too. Yeah, the Bible app's cool. People like to use it because it um, keeps, like, uh, their streak. Yeah. You can keep a streak going. Oh, okay. I yeah, you that. can set it up, and so it's, like, every time you log in, and I don't know I don't know exactly how it works, but, yeah. like, you can start a streak. Yeah, and then I want to make it to church every single week at 1015. So sometimes I'm like, all right, I could just watch church this week from YouTube, or, yeah. you know, we're going to be late, so let's go to the the other service, but like this year I want to make it every single Sunday. Yeah. 10, 15 at city light. There we go, baby. Yeah. So education. Yeah. So what an education goal would be, Hey, what are you going to do to build yourself up? Right. Mm -hmm. Some things that I've used over the years is how many books I want to read this year, mm -hmm. how many podcasts I want to listen to, how many coaches I want to hire, how many yeah. events I want to attend, how mm -hmm. many programs I want to join. Um, any of those things yeah. fit good. So for me, I have two education goals. Um, one is I want to hire five coaches. Okay. So five, you know, either like keep my current coaches, like, but I, I want five. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, just five people pouring into me uh -huh. essentially in these goals. Yeah. Cause guess what? Mm -hmm. If I want to get good at growing my faith, don't you think it probably makes sense to have a pastor? Yeah you know, helping you with that. Oh yeah. And that's actually, so another part that Brandon said was, let's say you make a goal to make a million dollars, right? Yeah. A great question to ask yourself is who do you know that currently hits that goal? Yeah. So for me, if I look at faith, right, I'm looking at you and I'm looking at Chris Lee right? I know you guys currently do everything yeah, on yeah. the faith side. Yeah. So first, when you're making a goal, make the goal, then who do you know that hits that goal? Yeah. And then what do they do regularly? Yeah. So I look at you, you read the Bible, you tied, you do all these things. Yeah. So I can leverage my relationships to help me hit my goals. hundred percent. So yeah. I look at the same way, right? So 
you know, if I want to hit these goals, I, I need five coaches to do it. Yeah. So I want to, you know, hit these goals of being extra generous. Well, who do I know that is just giving at such a crazy level yeah. that I can have start imprinting on me? Yeah. You know, um, with well, or with, um, you know, we're, we're going to get an affluence, which yeah. is business and money, but it's like, Hey, what is it I think is going to really move the needle the most this year for me and money? Yeah. And you know what my answer is. Who? You don't know. No, well, not the person, but yeah. like, what's the thing I'm focused on this year to, to grow the businesses? Digital marketing. Digital marketing. Yeah. Exactly. And I've said it on the podcast a few times, but it's like 2024, mm-hmm. I'm literally going to be the best digital marketer mm-hmm. in the game. Yeah. And it just is what it is. Mm-hmm. And what am I doing to do that? I'm literally spending as much time with the best digital marketers that I know Mm -hmm. and understanding all the complexities that come along with ads and funnels and all this stuff. Yeah. Coaches, Uh right? You've seen me bring these people in and just the month I decided to do this. Yeah. You know, I was like, you know what? We're going to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you're like, are you sure? I'm like, yes, because Mm -hmm. it's not just me figuring it out. I'm going to bring in the best people to Mm -hmm. teach me. Yep. Not, what I used to do, which is, hey, you just do it for me. And like, I don't want to learn. Just, yeah, just go do it. Yeah. I'm like, no, you're coming in and teach me. I don't want you to do it for me. Got it. And so, you know, I'm bringing in experts there. And then, you know, with um, health, mm-hmm. I have multiple coaches over there, right? Mm-hmm. That's how I've been able to get literally in the best shape of my life. You know, I've mm-hmm. got people helping me with nutrition and peptides and my workout plans and everything else. It's no, it's no wonder. Yeah. I'm in great shape. I didn't have a health coach for many years because I was like my own health coach and it's not like I was fat or anything, Yeah, which is why I thought I didn't need one. But guess what? Even if you're good, you want to get to a new level, guess what? You need new coaches. 100%. And so, you know, just hiring these coaches in these different spaces. Yeah. Um, for me, um, I want to go to three digital marketing events. I need to hire a leadership coach and then read 20 books. Um, I want to add another one where I, I did a podcast with Jonathan, uh, the guy that was just here the other day. Um, and he builds houses and he made it sound so simple that I'm interested to learn that process because I think that eventually I want to like build my own house Yeah, and, um, maybe a set of flipping houses, build them and sell them because yeah. the way he said his net worth is like net over a hundred million dollars. And he was like one of the richest people I, I've ever sat down and spoke to. And when mm-hmm. he was explaining everything, it made so much sense. And he was like flipping houses is like dumb and it's, you know, harder to scale. And he kind of like explained everything that he was doing. I was like, that makes so much sense. And, um, I think I'm one of the top investors in the country, I think for my age. Mm-hmm. So like by the time I'm his age, I should be like, double his net worth because he started like way after i started yeah yeah Yeah. i agree yeah so i think that's a good goal um i think my other one is i want to do one think time per month so people don't really know what think time is it's it's a um exercise from a book called the road less stupid Mm. i actually need to reread that book you guys will hear me always use the words like dumb and stupid yeah because it's just like Every time I see something that makes no sense, I'm just yeah. like, oh my gosh, so dumb. Um, and it's just not even that I get mad or mm-hmm. I just, I'm just like, that's just so dumb. Like why? Yeah. Um, and that book is a lot like, like that's there's a reason I like that book. Mm. But um, basically what he talks about is uh, there's this thing you can do called think time. Mm-hmm. You know, he likes to take an hour, <laughs> but mine are usually like 30 minutes. And essentially all you do is you just start asking yourself difficult questions. Mm. And so one of the ways that I've gotten through so many difficult situations is I don't immediately run to all these people. What should I do? How can you help me? Yeah. What's, what, what would you do in this situation? I yeah. never do that. Yeah. What I do is once a month, I think about all my problems mm. and I just run like, okay, this is the problem. Now I gotta say, how can I solve it? Mm -hmm. And so I just start writing down just lots of answers. There's no wrong answer. Yeah. You know, I'm just writing lots of answers to it. And one answer ends up sticking out. And you're like, huh, okay, let me expand on that. How would I actually do this? Yeah. Who do I need? How much is it going to cost? 
Okay. How quickly can we do this? You know? Yeah. How would things need to change? And so, boom, all of a sudden, that's why whenever you see me come with a plan mm -hmm. to you guys, it's already pretty bulletproof. You've already thought it out. Yeah, yeah, like I've already played every angle that it has of weakness and strength. And mm. very rarely are you like, have you thought about this? I'm like, yes. Yeah. Here's how you handle it. Mm. Um, and it's from that kind of exercise versus like, I should do new builds. Yeah. Right? So you're like, yeah, I should do new builds. I'm like, mm. that's great. Mm -hmm. Have you really thought about how all this ends up playing out? Yeah. Which you haven't yet. No. But if it was me and I was spending an hour thinking about new builds, and if I truly did want to go commit Mm -hmm. to doing new builds for a long time because this is a very big commitment you're making in your life. Yeah. And to just be sparked from one podcast and say, I'm a new builder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to learn about it. No, I, I get do it. it, but I want to learn about no, it. No, I know. Yeah. But even then I would look at it, mm -hmm. me personally, for instance, golf. Let's just use golf. Yeah. All right. I didn't just out of nowhere decide that I'm going to go put all these hours into golf. Mm -hmm. Essentially what happened was I found an interest in it. I was sparked by it because I mm -hmm. bought a piece of land mm -hmm. on a golf course and said, okay, do I want to like actually get good at golf? Because I have two options here. Mm -hmm. I can just golf whenever people ask me and mm -hmm. I won't, I'll, like I'll suck, but like I'm athletic. So like, it's not like I'll be super, super bad. Like I'm yeah. not going to whiff, Yeah, but <laughs> it's just going to suck. Yeah. And I go, all right, if that's the case, what, what does that path look like? And so I start playing out this path tree and I'm like, okay, I probably don't want to like go too often then because mm -hmm. I just don't like sucking at things. And, you know, people who are really good aren't going to invite me because yeah. why? Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, that's that path. And I go, well, let's see. What's the other path? Let's see. I want to be good. What's the cost of being good? Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm going to have to get a coach. I'm going to have to start practicing every day. I'm going to have to start watching YouTubes and reading books and mm -hmm. like really go all in. I know yeah. how hard it is to be good at a sport. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what's my reward for being good yeah. other than just laughing at my crappy employees and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah. just, just smoking them. them. Yeah. <laughs> like what's the, what's the reward beyond smoking <laughs> my employees who suck? <laughs> and I was like, well, the reward is Number one, do I think I'm going to spend a lot of time in the golf course the next 30 years doing business deals and everything? I go, probably. Yeah. I said, okay. Um, is there any benefit to golfing like on social media, like with content? I go, probably. Yeah. Like, it's getting pretty popular. Mm -hmm. And they, okay. Is there a benefit like actually just competitively? Yeah. That I could tap into. And I was like, well, yeah, they got tournaments and stuff. Maybe like I actually will fill this competitive void in my life. Mm. But by the way, all this is happening during a think time. Yeah. I'm like, what are the benefits long-term to this? And yeah. I'm just going through all the benefits mm. if I'm good. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's a lot of benefits. I like that. Mm -hmm. What's it take to be at good? Yeah. So now there's this new question that arrives. And this is why it takes an hour mm -hmm. because this simple question of, should I actually start to play golf Mm -hmm. leads to all of these new things I now have to think about. And so by the time I talk to you or Mindy or whoever else, mm -hmm. you don't even know like all the things that have happened at this point, but I'll go to you and I'll be like, I've decided I'm just, I'm going to be good at golf. Yeah. And it's not like this arrogant thing. It's just yeah. like, I know what it's going to take. I know what it's going to be. I know the cost. It's not going to happen overnight, but I'm going to do it. Got it. You know, it's funny. I was talking to John Sullivan yesterday okay. uh -huh. and I was like, dude, how have you been? How's your golf game? He's like, dude, I gave up on golf. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why? He's like, I was uh, golfing with Mike Ferry and he outdrove me. So I just gave up. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> so funny. I was like, oh my God, that's hilarious. But um, <sighs> yeah. So, okay. The fun part. Okay. Affluence. Money. Yeah. How much money do you want to make in 2024? <laughs> what did I put? Um... You're like all of it. <laughs> Give me all the money. <laughs> Billions. Um, this is what I put, and I'll just put it out here for people. I don't really care. Um, my goal across all the companies is to do 50 million in revenue. That's my okay. goal. Got I think it. it's attainable. Um, if we hit it, it would definitely be like the best case scenario. It's not mm -hmm. definitely like, oh, dude, like this is an easy thing to do. It's not. Yeah. Um, would I be happy if we did half of that? 
I would still be okay with it as long as we hit the net profit numbers yeah. that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. But I know that you don't hit half of that by just aiming for half of that. Mm. You know, if That's you what aim, I was gonna ask you, you aim for the best case, which is still reasonable. Yeah. Then, even if you end up at half of that or seventy percent, whatever, uh -huh. you're still gonna be very happy with yeah. the year. Um. And, you know, that's the whole concept of what 10X really is. You know, it's like, all right, you know, let's, it, it would be more extreme for that. Uh -huh. Like his goal would end up being say, okay, we got to make 150 million. Yeah. And it's like, to me, yeah. my mind is just like, I mean, that's not going to happen this year. Yeah. So I just don't like thinking like that. Got of it. just getting something that's so unrealistic. Yeah. But I get the concept of why you do it because- Basically, now your mind is forced to think differently mm -hmm. because I could do a think time yeah. and I could say, hey, you know what? How would I make 150? Yeah. Because it actually, th there's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. I just literally have not thought hard enough of how to do it. And I haven't thought about what's the cost to that scenario. Yeah. Right. Because like, here's one other vanity way to do it. Right, you can say, "Well, I can just uh, go own a company that does a hundred million, and I'll own a sliver of it, and boom, we got there." Yeah, there are people that do that. Yep, I'm not doing that. I'm yeah. like, "Hey, my companies that I am the majority stakeholder of, mm -hmm. I want to make fifty million, and I want to do it at forty percent margins." That was the second question I was going to ask you. So, if someone's making a goal, a financial goal, you think it should be kind of a which, stretch? Which, by the way, just for anyone listening, yeah, I've never done anything close to that. Yeah. So, like, to be clear, this is not like, yeah, dude, it's going to be a normal year. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. So, you think people should make a stretch goal financially. Yeah. And have a clear net profit attached to it. Not just like, I want to make a million dollars, but then maybe they do hit a million dollars, <throat> but they spent 900000 to make it. Well, it depends what the mm -hmm. goal is for the year. Mm -hmm. because, you know, if you're a tech company, you don't care about net profit. Yeah. You know, these tech companies with venture capital, their whole objective is just growth because if mm -hmm. they can keep showing revenue growth and adding users, well, the company keeps getting super, super valuable. Mm -hmm. So they may not be making net profit, but guess what? The valuation of the company just went up a hundred million. Yeah. For them, that was all they cared about. Mm -hmm. So net profit, no, is not always the goal. Mm -hmm. Now, for most people, yes, net profit is the goal. I'm just saying it's not always the goal. Yeah. Um, you know, we could go into a season next year where, hey, maybe our net profit like ended up being great. And I'm mm -hmm. like, look, I'm going to sacrifice some net this year because I really want to hit this revenue for this reason. Yeah. And at that point, well, like the main target has changed. Mm -hmm. But you need to know like what's basically your main KPI mm -hmm. that you're really like focused in on. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in this fourth quarter, my main thing I've been focused on for all the businesses is just cutting the fat and getting net profit up. Mm -hmm. And I've been just cutting fat out of everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you know, what's crazy is it's not even that we've like really reduced payroll or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just all been reallocated yeah. into different things that produce better margins and more, you know, profit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had a, a call two days ago with Noel, my mm -hmm. sister, who is yeah. the CFO. And we just had like our, our finance call. I go, Hey, here's the two main things I want you to think about this next year. Mm -hmm. Number one is cash on hand. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we always have enough cash on hand. Um, you know, we had a lot of cash on hand going into the year mm -hmm. and literally because of that, that is the only reason we were able to get through the storm and withstand all these losses because I was wise enough to keep enough cash on hand. I didn't mm -hmm. buy all these Lambos and dumb yeah. crap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this coming year, rebuild back mm -hmm. to what I think is a comfortable level mm -hmm. for us. And then, you know, just always maintain that cash on hand yeah. for the businesses and the health. Right. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing I told her, I said, Hey, the second most important goal for me is not necessarily hitting this 50 million number, mm -hmm. but making sure we maintain our 40% margin. Mm. That's my goal. Yeah. And if we maintain a 40% margin and we make 25 million, well, you know, 10 million bucks and <laughs> that ain't, <laughs> you know, like I'm pretty happy. <laughs> I've never net 10 million. So yeah. I, I'm going to be very happy with it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, 
that's net net margin mm -hmm. is my main focus. Yeah. This year. Okay. And I know there's going to be a lot of entrepreneurs listening to this that maybe they're starting the year off in real estate. Hey, right? by the way, I'm glad mm -hmm. you mentioned real estate. Yeah. Notice how in none of that, like real estate for, was a goal. Yeah. Okay. There was yeah. no, Hey, I want to get this many units. Yeah. I want to flip this many houses. Uh-huh. Why? That's what I want to talk about because years ago, Mm -hmm. when flipping houses was basically, let's say 95% of my income, uh -huh. those were the goals. Yeah. It was like, Hey, let's flip a hundred houses. Mm -hmm. Let's do hundred, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. That's just what that was at the time. Yeah. Now in the current environment in this year, do I have a goal of how many rental units I want to buy? No, because dude, it's tough to get rentals to pencil out. Mm. I'm not going to force myself to go buy rental units right now just mm. for the sake of trying to write my tax bill off and buy a bad deal mm -hmm. and whatever. I don't want to do that. Yeah. It just, it's not a good use of my time and energy. I only have so much time and energy in the day. Yeah. What's a better use of it? Figuring out how to get to 50 million mm -hmm. and keeping that margin mm -hmm. or figuring out how to get to 25 million yeah. with that margin and then try to like offset my taxes. Yeah. They might yield similar results, mm -hmm. but I can tell you, if you have the skill to make 50 million, you, you'll get rentals. Don't worry. Yeah. It ain't going to be a big deal. And by the way, too, at that point, the rentals and everything else are far easier to get because now I have access to bigger deals where I can just buy one big deal because my balance sheet is so strong. My you know, I, I can go fund deals myself. I, I mean, dude, if you made 20 million net, you could fund a lot of deals and refi later and yeah. not worry about raising cap and all the things that constrain other people. Mm -hmm. Um, and so to me, it's just like, dude, I would rather focus on that goal, which by the way, involves home run offer very heavily yep. with what we're doing on the home run offer side yeah. to get there. Yeah. Like I want home run offer for those who don't know, that's my house flipping wholesale company. I was going to say that. Yeah. I don't ever talk about it. Yeah. But <laughs> you're still going to make, hold on. He's still going to make millions of dollars this year at HRO, but he yeah. never talks about it. I, I, I forget because I don't know, dude, like my head's just wherever its focus is at, which like I said, is digital marketing yeah. and wealthy kingdom. That's mm -hmm. why like this year has been so much about faith and cause that's just like, what was my focus? Yeah. I literally cannot talk about everything, five different things, even yeah. though they're all doing great things. Yeah. Cause it's just, I'm not focused on it. I don't even think about it. I'm just yeah. like, it's not a concern right now. Yeah. This is the concern. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, at home run offer now that we're going nationwide wholesaling. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, dude, I'm going to murder it. I'm just <laughs> like, I see it now. And it goes back to why is digital marketing like a goal? Yeah. You might think I'm just talking about education and yeah. events and stuff. No, because if I can digital market effectively for home run offer nationwide and I can mm -hmm. go get leads for 20 bucks yeah. when I've been paying 600 bucks for TV commercial leads mm -hmm. and I have the dispo process in the back end and we already have the online presence with me and everything mm -hmm. else. Oh my gosh, dude. And I have no risk because mm -hmm. you asked at the beginning, yeah. Hey, what lessons did you learn? I learned, yeah. man, I probably don't want to just carry 50, 60 flips anymore. Yeah. Like what's the point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you start to look and I'm like, well, dude, I could literally wholesale a hundred houses a month. Like I've done the math. Yeah. I'll tell you the math. Yeah. And this is part of how we get to 50 million. Yeah. So the math is this right now, traditionally at home run offer, we've, we've spent 50 to a hundred million or <laughs> not hundred million. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain is going there, right? I'm getting to a hundred. Yeah. Um, actually that is part of one of our presentations. I have bought and paid back over a hundred million dollars. Wow. Not many people have ever done that. Yeah. Okay. Like think about that. Since 2015, I have borrowed $100 million from private lenders, hard money lenders, banks, mm -hmm. normal mom and pops. We've bought property and we have sold it and paid everyone back. Mm -hmm. Now one person has never been paid back out of a hundred million dollars worth of deals. Mm -hmm. And these aren't wholesales. These aren't things that you can't, you can go look them up. Yeah. So I don't even know why I brought that because I just said a hundred million, but the way that we get to, um, these crazy numbers is this, here's the math. 
Right now, we spend fifty to a hundred thousand a month. Mm-hmm. That's what we've traditionally spent mm-hmm. at Home Run Offer. Every time we've ever tried to ramp it up here in Las Vegas, yeah. we always hit a cap. Yeah, we literally don't make any more money. Mm. And I've I have theories for that. I think you just you get diminishing returns mm-hmm. in advertising as you know you spend more on certain things. Um, there's only so much opportunity in Vegas, and yeah. so you know at some point you either make the choice of taking lower profits to do more deals or mm-hmm. you go to a new market, right? Yeah. For me, I always made the decision. I'm like, well, I don't want to worry about any of that. You know what? It's good the way it is. Yeah. Let's just do it. Stay status quo. I'm going to go focus on these other opportunities mm-hmm. that are more scalable and, you know, I can go do that. So that's literally what I did the last few years. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going back into home run offer with all my new skills that I learned over here about building sales teams, about running ads, all the stuff that we got now Mm -hmm. building out our uh, partner program where people are already partnering with us. And we've Mm -hmm. done, I don't even know how many deals a lot. No. And with that, I just do the math and I'm like, okay, so right now we spend, uh, I'll show you just uh, let's, let's get this calculator up. Okay. So at $50,000 for simple math, um, let's just for easier math, say we get it at 500 bucks a lead Mm -hmm. for TV, which is our main marketing source or PPC. So that's 100 leads a month mm-hmm. is literally what we're getting. So the team is working off of 100 leads a month, and they're just really like hammering those leads because yeah. they're expensive, mm-hmm. okay? Traditionally, TV has always given me a 4X. Yeah. That's what it is, and I don't mind it. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, if, if I had a machine that I could put a dollar in and get four, I would do it a lot. Yeah. So it's all good, but the problem is we do have to flip. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to take on risk. Mm-hmm. The leads are what they are. We got to go on appointments face to face with the seller. Mm -hmm. And look, a lot of people would kill to still have that business. I've run it very well for years, but just because most people would love it. Mm -hmm. Is that the best way to run the business? If I'm in a different place now and I have more skills and things that can actually create a way better business model. Mm -hmm. Well, no. So why am I switching models? Well, number one, okay. Let's just do the math on this nationwide model, Mm -hmm. okay? If I can get leads for 25 bucks Mm -hmm. on average nationwide, and these are still like, these aren't cold call leads or text leads. These are people filling out the form saying, I want to sell my house. Mm -hmm. So they're inbound leads, which is very different than how people think about a $20 lead traditionally. Yeah. Okay. So if I spend $50,000 and they get $25 leads, I get 2,000 leads. Mm -hmm. So literally right off the bat, I'm getting 20 X the leads Mm -hmm. that I was getting with just TV. Yeah. Now, are they as good as a TV lead? No, Mm -hmm. but here's the thing. Let's say I can close, you know, one out of 20 for Mm -hmm. simple math, which I think we can do better, Mm -hmm. but let's say one out of 20 of those close. Okay. That's a hundred deals a month. Mm -hmm. That's the math on the same spend. Yeah. Now, how much is a hundred deals? You know, they're not going to be Las Vegas profits. Yeah. Our average wholesale in Vegas this year was like 37 grand. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to be nationwide. It's, mm-hmm. It remains to be seen, but mm-hmm. what if it's 15? Yeah. I don't see it being less than that. Mm-hmm. What if it's 20? Mm-hmm. You know, 100 deals at 15 grand is 1.5 million a month. At yeah. 20 grand, it's 2 million a month. Mm-hmm. And we have all these partner students who are already funneling yeah. deals too. Yeah. So like- it's very conceivable mm-hmm. that home run, I mean, it's very, home run should make 10 million plus next year. Mm-hmm. If we do not, I will be disappointed. Mm. But I also think there's an outside chance that it could make 15, mm. 20, you know, things really get rolling. Yeah. We're not anywhere close to it yet. We have to still build out a couple of things in order to scale and handle that many leads. But yeah. Like you just look at it and you're like, the math is the math. Mm-hmm. It's just simply a matter of, can we get enough salespeople and yeah. can we get good enough at Dispo nationwide? And you look at this business model. It's interesting because number one, not only is it more scalable, you know, you just can do way bigger numbers. Yeah. Number two, it is way less risky. Mm-hmm. It's just all wholesale. Yeah. The risk is significantly less than all these flips. Mm-hmm. You don't even need to go raise all this capital to do it. Yeah. And then number three you know, you just look at, um, like the margin on it. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, think about that at 
20, like if you spend 50,000 mm -hmm. to go make, let's just say it was even, you know, I said one and a half million. Yeah. You know, one and a half million. What is that? I mean, that's, is that a 30 X? That's a 30 X. Yeah. I get a four X. Mm -hmm. So even if I did 20% of the deals, mm -hmm. right. And I, I spent 50,000 to make half a million. Yeah. I'm still getting a 10 X. Mm -hmm. And so my profit margin is just so much higher because my marketing spend is less. Yeah. So you just look at it and you're like, profit margin's better. It's less risky. It's mm -hmm. way more scalable. So why am I even concerned about the other way we used to do it to this point? Yeah. And this is the problem most business owners have is they're scared mm -hmm. to get away from something that works. Yeah. That was the question I was about to ask you. Yeah. But yeah, go into that. They're soft. <laughs> like, I don't... <laughs> like, <laughs> to me, when the answer is obvious, mm -hmm. why would you not do it? Mm -hmm. You're just so scared of losing what you already have. I can always go back to that. Yeah. If I'm completely wrong over here, which I'm not, mm -hmm. but if I am, mm -hmm. it's not like that went away. Yeah. I know how to do it. And so I tell people all the time when they're trying to go start a business, I'm like, what if it didn't work? What would you do? Oh, well, you know, I'd probably be doing what I'm doing now. All right, well, let's go. What are you doing? Yeah. You have nothing to lose. It's a no lose mm -hmm. situation. So... Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. If someone's looking at their year and they're like, okay, I want to do a million dollars flipping houses, right? Yeah. How open should they be to other strategies or other opportunities? Or should they say, hey, I am only doing this and I am not going to pivot? Um, I think it, everyone's different, right? If yeah. you are already having success, like, so this is what I would tell one of our students. Let's just say they're making 200 grand this year. Yeah. Okay? Like I want to make a million next year. Would I tell them to change their whole business model? No, because they still don't know a lot. Mm. If you made 200 grand. Yeah. Awesome. Dude. I'm like hype for them. Yeah. But they're still rookies. Yeah. They get it. They still don't know a ton yet. Mm -hmm. So I would say, yeah, just like do more yeah. of what you just did. Yeah. Wholesale more next year. Flip uh -huh. more. Yeah. I'm not telling them, Hey, you should do this, this whole new nationwide thing and learn a whole new skill. And yeah, I would just do more of what they currently do. Got it. And so when that caps sense. out and you have this reliable thing, which is what's happened, right? I've got this yeah. reliable thing. Mm -hmm. Then if you want to grow, you have a choice to make. Yeah. If you're capped out, which we have been capped out, mm -hmm. you need a new model. Got it. If you want to grow, which yeah. by the way, the last couple of years, I have not wanted to grow. I'm like, hey, it's good. Yeah. Just run it. And this model, we don't need to do more than 100. That's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go grow in these other things. Yeah. Yeah, because I think um, that's one thing about you that you're not afraid to test things. And I think that's one reason why you are so successful. And I tell people that I'm like, because Ryan's not scared to like try something, look dumb if it doesn't work, and then just move on. Where <laughs> other people, they're scared to just try stuff, to try stuff. They're just like, They'll be at a hundred K for 10 years as a realtor. Oh yeah. And they think they have it figured out. Yeah. And I'm like, you ain't nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So they're thinking small and they're scared to try new things. Yeah. Well, okay. So this is my problem with those kinds of people mm -hmm. is it's such a, either one of two things, such a prideful thing mm -hmm. that they think they're that good and they yeah. got to figure it figured out because all their friends are bums. Yeah. Okay. That's the only way you could possibly think that. Yeah. If you make a hundred grand as a realtor and you've been doing that and you think you're the man. Yeah. And like, you don't want help or to grow. Mm -hmm. You're an idiot. Okay. That's number one. Number two is you have the lack of self-awareness to mm -hmm. know that, dang, dude, there's probably a lot I don't know. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I always am like, dude, what don't I know? Mm -hmm. Cause I know a lot and there's more I don't know. Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, well, this nationwide thing, I've always dismissed it. I'm mm -hmm. just like, man, these guys, you know, whatever, man. I don't know anybody that's doing it at a high, like at the time, I didn't know anybody that was doing it at a super high level. Yeah. And then as just like things kept playing out, mm -hmm. I was like, huh, I wonder what it would look like yeah. to do this like all in. Mm -hmm. And I started to think about my skill set that has developed over the years. And I'm like, why wouldn't I do this? Yeah. Like if I was starting over today, mm -hmm. this is exactly what I would do. Yeah. And look, I'm talking about like doing potentially big numbers and everything mm -hmm. else, but this is how all great ideas start. Mm -hmm. It all starts on faith that, Hey, I got a great idea. 
I've gone through all the ways that it could fail or break or everything else. I'm mm -hmm. okay if it doesn't work out. Yeah. But the opportunity is far too massive not yeah. to try. Yeah. And um, I mean, the same thing was true of social media during 2020 when it was like, I, I understood how big the opportunity was. And I mm -hmm. was like, oh, bro, I'm going to murder it on social media. Yeah. I had zero followers. Mm -hmm. And people were like, what? And yeah. I just looked at the competition and I looked at, who they were and their track records. And I'm like, yeah, dude, if this guy can do it, yeah, there ain't no way I don't win. There's yeah. no way. Yeah. There's no way. That's just mm -hmm. how I've always looked at life. Yeah. But I'm also self-aware enough to know when I am outclassed and it's not possible mm. because if I go look at a guy like LeBron, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I ain't, I ain't playing in the NBA. There ain't no yeah. way. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to go create a Tesla. There ain't no way. I know yeah. nothing about that. I have no desire to do that. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. I have no, I have no uh, <laughs> grandeur of playing on the PGA Tour. Yeah, I know how good they are. I'm like, yeah. I have no chance. Mm. Those guys, they're that good. Yeah. Now, do I think I could be the best celebrity golfer? Easily. Yeah. I think I can easily do it. You think you could be Curry? Yeah. Not right now. <laughs> Not right now. I can't. You don't think so? He's that good. I wouldn't say he's he's good. I wouldn't say he's that good. I would mm -hmm. say I'm just not there yet. Got it. I know I'm not there. Mm. But I also know what I have to do to get there. Yeah. And I know it's possible. On the flip side, what if, how does someone know if they're getting like shiny object syndrome? Because you haven't succeeded in something yet and you're trying something new. Mm. Okay. So they have to wait until they have success in something before they try something new. Or you better have an extended period of failure at something before you try something new. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because here's the, like, these are the only two scenarios trying yeah. something new makes sense. Mm -hmm. Number one, you have, well, no, this is what most people do. I'll tell you what most people do and what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Most people have a little bit of success. They go make a hundred grand. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, I should be doing this now. Yeah. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's shiny object syndrome. Dude, I got to figure it out. I'm going to go do this. Mm -hmm. The other scenario is, dude, I tried this for like a month. It didn't work out. It doesn't work. Yeah. And so those are the wrong scenarios and how people do it. Yeah. The right scenario is, hey, I just made a hundred grand. This is great. I'm going to just freaking do more of it. That's what I just said. Yeah. You know, next year I'm going to do 500 grand and I'm not focused on anything else. I'm just going to put my head down and hit 500. Uh-huh. Or... Hey, I just spent the last six months or a year trying this thing out, the social media thing. You know, this was my goal. I didn't even come close to hitting it. Yeah. And I don't see how I'm going to even, like, I don't see how that's going to change in the next year. Yeah. In that scenario, I'm like, all right, then yeah, you should try something new. It's not worth it. Because mm. you really, truly did give it your all. You gave it time. You put energy into it. Mm -hmm. and it didn't work. And it's not always going to work but you at least know for sure why it's not. Mm, okay. So, all right. So let's go to L, lifestyle. Yep, lifestyle. So lifestyle for me is like the fun stuff, guys. Um, you know, not everything's got to be all like hardcore and like ultra productive. Um, lifestyle to me is like, you know, how many vacations is your family going to go mm. on? You're going to buy that new car that you've been dreaming about. Are yeah. you going to move into your dream home? Mm -hmm. Are you going to get that new office? Like it's materialistic yeah. for sure. Or experience based. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like have fun with it. Yeah. You know, I'm not asking anyone here to be a monk. Yeah. I got <laughs> nice stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> Enjoy your life. Mm. Like how can anyone hate if you're donating yeah. and you're doing all these things and you're making money, like, dude, if anybody says anything to you, tell them to kick rocks. Yeah. Cause usually broke people who ain't doing nothing for anyone. <laughs> so like, that's what it is. Yeah. So, okay. Lifestyle for me, one of my things, lifestyle, it's kind of a business goal, but it kind of not. Um, I, I need to sell my mountain. So, you know, I've mm -hmm. got my mountain mm -hmm. and it's for sale right now. And you know, I, I was going to build my dream home on it when I bought mm -hmm. it back in 2020, mm -hmm. got a great deal. You know, I got it for 600 grand. Mm -hmm. It's like what got me started in golf because yeah. it's right there. But uh, 
you know, since then I've moved into my current dream home and I'm good. Mm -hmm. I do not want to build another house mm. for a long time. That yeah. one's good. So I want to sell it and it's on the market. And if it sells for what it, you know, we got a list for five and a half million. So I, I might mess around and start being a land guy <laughs> <laughs> because I've actually gotten some really good deals on land that are going to be all seven figure profits. Mm. So, um, and that's just me and land is like my side hustle. Yeah. When I'm like looking for me, I'm like, dude, okay, this is a good community. This is mm. a good lot. This yeah. is definitely undervalued. I'm going to buy that. Mm. So like, yeah, that's, that's one of my goals. And then, um, <laughs> the other one is actually like, cause vacation wise, I used to set vacation goals and I'd be like, Hey, I want to go on four vacations a year, one per quarter with the family. Mm -hmm. And well, actually here's what we did. We would do two with the family and two with just me and Mindy. And oh, so okay. one family vacation, we take her parents, mm -hmm. the other, we would take mine and obviously all the kids. Yeah. And then the other two, everybody's kicked out. It's just, just us. You. Yeah. So I don't make that a goal anymore, but just because it's going to happen. Yeah. I don't need to make it a goal. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, I already have my dream home. I already have all the cars. I, like I have all the material things I want. Yeah. So mine are more so like, um, like sell that piece of land. And then I have the other land I told you about in Costa Rica. Yeah. And, I either like, like, I just want clarity on it. Mm. You know, am I going to flip it? Cause I could flip it for a seven figure profit too. Yeah. Or do I want to actually make the decision to build and do it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what God's going to call me to do, Yeah. but whatever happens, happens. And that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then I just want clarity. Like both of those, I want them by the end of next year to be done one way or the other. Got it. Cause they're both in limbo. Yeah. I think for mine, I want to do four vacations. I might actually go to Maui in March. So, what are you gonna you gonna drive there? I might drive there. There's a <laughs> ship that's leaving in February. <laughs> that I'm gonna get on. But uh, Brandon Turner invited me to be on his podcast. But I guess they're having some sort of like real estate investor. Thing I know what it is. I told him. I told him to do it. Where he's doing like Did a. Did he tell of you podcasts. like a couple of days ago? Uh no. His his team reached out to me. Yeah, like a couple of days ago. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I told him. How to do the idea of last week. What was it? Like get all the investors there and I'll, I'll tell you off camera, but <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's good. But I'm probably gonna go to that, do three other vacations, do weekly date night with my wife, and then once a month do a date night with each kid where I take them out one on one and just hang out. I love it. Do stuff with them. Yeah. And just so everyone knows too, like on lifestyle, one of mine was um well, actually no, I put I put my date nights on team with my relationships, but they could it could kind of go either way. Yeah. So let's talk about team. What yeah. is that? What does so that mean? So team team to me is like relationships. Uh -huh. And so, you know, hey, what am I going to do to just like feed into people? Yeah. You know, so date nights with the wife. Like mm -hmm. when I first started doing that with Mindy was during COVID. Mm -hmm. It's ironic, dude, because before COVID, we were super frugal. And we never went on like expensive dates or anything. Mm -hmm. And finally... In 2020, we're like, you know, we're doing pretty good. Like, yeah, we could probably like even go on the strip and have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's crazy. To th it's funny now, but um, we were still both just driving used cars. She had like a used 2014 Lexus yeah. and I had a used 2016 Lexus. Yeah. And like, we were just frugal, man. And let me tell you, we got to taste the high life a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and you get addicted. <laughs> so we started going on date nights and we enjoyed it. We were like, wow, I did not know that like food like this existed. This yeah. is great. Yeah. Um, because we'd always hate. We we're mm. like, dude, why would anyone pay three hundred dollars for yeah. dinner? And then you experience it at a good restaurant and the service yeah. and the quality. And I started to appreciate excellence. Mm. And I was like, dude, to see the excellence of this chef and mm. what he's created and the ambiance and to see these waiters are not the same people at Chipotle. Yeah. Okay. Like these guys, <laughs> they're nice. Yeah. <laughs> like they actually want you to stay there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And they're, uh, you know, I remember the first big date night we did was at Wing Lei in the mm -hmm. Wen, one of my favorite Chinese restaurants. And they brought this little stool out and I'm like, what is that? St who can sit on that stool? Mm -hmm. Me and Mindy were looking at it all weird. And he's like, no, it's for her purse. Oh, I'm like, her purse gets a seat. <laughs> and by the way, at that time, she yeah. had no Louis Vuitton or anything. It was a $20 Ross purse. Oh, wow. It needed its own seat. The seat was more valuable. <laughs> and so 
yeah, dude, things like that cracked me up. But you know, those were some of the goals that I had yeah. in, uh, 2020 was to go on date nights. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually had a goal to call my parents once a week mm -hmm. because even though they're here in Vegas, it's like, you know, I'll go a month without seeing them. And it's just yeah. like, man, they're getting older and mm -hmm. you know, that's not right. And so that was one. And I've had other kind of like, uh, relationship goals mm -hmm. over the years. But, uh, yeah, my ones for this year, what are my ones for this year? Um, uh, well, I'll tell you too, like with relationships too, I, I personally include like social media in this yeah. because that's like a people thing, mm -hmm. right? Social. Um, so I'll tell you like one of my goals for this coming year is to get 10 million downloads on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to, it'd be a fun goal to go after. How many are you going to do this year in 2023? Well, just like audio downloads. I think we're at like almost 3 million or something. Oh my gosh. And that's audio. So, I uh -huh. mean, if you count YouTube and stuff too, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's probably over 10 million. Like, so I'm just talking yeah. like audio uh -huh. and that's not counting like the shorts and the clips. And yeah. All that stuff too. Yeah. But you know, that's wild. <laughs> you know, what cracks me up too is like, I see, uh, the podcast charts and they're so manipulated. It's so funny Yeah, because like I have buddies who are like in the top 10. Yeah. They definitely aren't getting that yeah. anywhere close, but they know how to manipulate like Apple. Yeah. I think, uh, it's funny cause I, I have goals and I'm like, okay, I, I think I got like 57,000 downloads this year. And Heck then yeah, I hear dude. yours at 3 million. I'm like, crap. I was so happy about my 57,000. Or I oh, you check. remember? Yeah, we were, we were looking in the office, and you were like, "Yeah, dude, I got fifty-seven. I was like, "All right." And then we were only looking at my last thirty days. Yeah, and you yeah. were like, "Oh, dude, I'm only like four x, five x behind." Or I'm like one tenth behind yours, but yeah. yours was just for the month, it's <laughs> for the year. I'm like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Austin. Damn. Hey, damn. We yeah, gotta fix it. This <laughs> it's the production team. Yeah, it's the videographer and his yeah. damn lens. <laughs> you know, it's the lens. You know, it'd be funny. It'd be one thing. Cause like, it's funny, you know, being in the social media game, like people always want to blame like those people. That's yeah. why I'm not getting yeah. views. It's the editors. Yeah. I never get clips from Austin. Yeah. He yeah. sucks. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is, but it just cracks me up because, um, that excuse can't be used here Yeah, because it's like, well now Ryan still gets them. So yeah. Yeah. Either you need to grow hair on yeah. top of your head or, or level up. More. Yeah. <laughs> do more. I am going to post, I am going to post three times a week. Three podcasts a week, and then five to ten reels a week. I've been posting every day, so that's, that's my goal. This year, I want to take social media more serious. Wait, re repeat what you want to do this this year. This year, I want to do three podcasts a week. Wealthy Investor Podcast. That's good. Just that's go good. to Apple and just guys. Give me actually, a like. you know what? Okay, <laughs> if you're still here, if you're still here, <laughs> okay, and you're Brian Davila fan, and you have not subscribed to the Wealthy Investor Podcast, go. I don't know. Do it. Uh, just why don't you just bribe them and give them yeah, something? Yeah. Well, if you uh, if you, you want to golf, <laughs> <laughs> go. Okay. Once you subscribe, here's what I want you guys to do: go screenshot that you subscribed on Apple mm -hmm. and DM Brian. Yep. On his IG, say I did it. The Brian Davila. And Brian will uh, make something happen. I will give you a gift. It's yep. gonna be a surprise. Oh, you actually just reminded me. You asked me something about donating in golf. Yeah. I forgot about that. So. Yeah, I kind of like while I was praying, I had this vision and I was like, you know what? I've avoided like uh, doing the Ryan personal or uh, like the Ryan, the influencer type stuff. Company or something? Well, no, like uh, let's say like speaking on other people's stages yeah. and, and getting paid and mm -hmm. like one-on-one um, -on -one yeah. coaching. Like I don't really do mm -hmm. too much of any of that because I just don't want to. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? This year in 2024, because I was thinking about how we're going to fund Wealthy Kingdom because we're about to be nonprofit status. And I was like, all right, I mean, yeah, we'll get donations and stuff from people. Mm -hmm. and But how can I be sure that it like always is funded? Yeah. What can I do? And I was like, you know what? What if everything that I get as Ryan, the person, not any of my businesses, mm -hmm. generates... I just give it all to Wealthy Kingdom. Yeah. So that way, when somebody's like, Ryan, come speak on my stage, 
I don't just keep saying no or I guess look greedy and yeah. say, hey, this is what it's going to be. Yeah. I'm like, hey, this is what it's going to be. It all goes to my charity. Yeah. You can do it or not. I don't care either way. Yeah. Like, but this is the cost. Yeah. That and, reminds me of Javen. Yeah. And that's probably where I like subconsciously thought about it. Yeah. And so, you know, whether it's me speaking for other people, whether it's people, um, you know, uh, paying me to do anything, you know, mm -hmm. their events, the, their podcast, or yeah. whether somebody wants to sponsor this podcast mm -hmm. or sponsor WealthCon or sponsor mm -hmm. like, well, I guess WealthCon wouldn't count, but sponsor... Um, uh, Golf. Yeah, like play the 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 one on one uh, golf with Ryan's mm. definitely would fall into that. Mm -hmm. Or if I wanted to just start doing some like one off consulting and stuff, mm -hmm. put it all towards that. Yeah. What about um, before we get to health? Uh, do you think it's too late to grow a personal brand? No. Yeah, because I know even for me, there's been times where I'm like, I'm just so far behind. This isn't going to work. How long ago did I tell you to do it? Uh, 2020, I believe. Yeah. yeah. 2020. I saw you doing it and I'm not going to lie. I was like, why is he posting on TikTok? That's so dumb. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. Why does he, and why does he keep telling us? Yeah. To do yeah. It? And then we're having meetings about it. And then he has a <laughs> stupid schedule. He's like, I'm going to do this on this day, this on this day, this on this day. And I'm like, I don't get it. But I know there's people who are watching this who are like, it's probably too late. Like these people are so far ahead of me or, you know, I don't understand the algorithm. They need to join wealthy creator, <laughs> but that's, that's a whole nother subject. But yeah, no, it's not too late. I mean, look, I always tell people this. I'm like, look, when, when somebody comes into wealthy investor and they're brand mm -hmm. new and they've never done a deal. Yeah. What's a win for them? Is it making a million dollars? Yeah. No, that's not a win for them. Yeah. A win is simply just doing a deal. Yeah. You know, and I ask people all the time, especially when they join the partner program, mm -hmm. I'm like, hey guys, and this isn't how we do it, but I just hypothetically, I go, hey, mm. if you could do a deal with us, even if you didn't get paid anything from it, but yeah. you got to do the deal with us mm -hmm. and experience it and learn through the process and say you, you did a deal, mm -hmm. would you be happy and would you yeah. do it everybody's like absolutely like 100%. just to get my feet wet to get the experience to work with the team absolutely mm -hmm. and i'm like all right i'm gonna go change the comp agreement real quick on our profit <laughs> split you guys said you would do it for free mm -hmm. no because like we pay anywhere from 15 to 50 percent mm -hmm. on our jv splits with the partner program so um reason i bring that up is that somebody might make a couple thousand bucks on their first deal mm -hmm. and they are so excited and so happy. It's like the biggest win of their life. Like yeah. it was proof to them that they could generate wealth on their own. Yeah. They didn't need a boss, an employer. They actually created it out of thin air. Yeah. And that is the beauty of entrepreneurship, being able to create money and revenue out of thin air from just an idea. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what a win looks like to them. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have somebody who comes into the program who is already flipping houses. They're doing well. They're like, yo, I need to scale and get to seven figures. Well, the win for them is different. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, we got to figure out how to teach them how to hire and, you know, build a team and an actual company and go from hustler to business owner. Mm -hmm. And so a win for them is scaling to that level. Mm -hmm. Another example of a win, you know, somebody who's been on the show and, uh, you know, has been at our events, Omar, mm -hmm. you know, with, with Omar Alfaro, um, I've talked to him about this. I go, Hey, tell me, do you really like want to like scale and double, triple your revenue? Mm -hmm. Or what if you can make the same amount of money, but work 20% mm -hmm. of how, how much you're working today? Yeah. Which one would you pick? He's like, dude, I would rather work 20% of the time and make the same. Yeah. That's, that's the win. Mm -hmm. So you got to clearly define what's actually the outcome that you desire truly and what's the win. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for me, uh, or well, to relate this all back to somebody wanting to start their personal brand mm -hmm. is like, do you need to get a million followers? Are you going to get a million followers this year? No, you're not. Yeah. Could you get 10,000 for yeah. sure? Could you get 50,000? It's unlikely, but you could. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll be honest. Like yeah. the amount of people that do it don't like it's, it's rare, mm -hmm. but with 10,000 followers, like change your business. Would you be able to help? I mean, that's 10,000 people who choose yeah. to follow you. That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so 
you know, you just got to define what a win is. Yeah. So go to wealthycreator.io. <laughs> well, we have .com now. Yeah. Oh, you guys do. Okay. Nice. I'm actually, uh, by the time this comes out, I might have the last missing one we don't have. Which one? I'm not going to say it online because freaking, <laughs> you know, gonna buy it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want the price to go up, <laughs> Yeah. but I'm negotiating it. Okay. So last one, health. So I want to bench 225. And by the way, this isn't the end because I have yeah. to talk about other parts of the app and what you do to actually achieve this. Yeah. That's me like giving you a cliffhanger to keep listening. Yeah. So health. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had the best um, health I've ever had. Mm. And, you know, if you want to make a health goal, I would say, yeah, it could be weight related, fat mm. loss related, mm. fat percentage related. Yeah. Um, don't use body mass index. That's the dumbest measurement ever. Yeah. Uh, Get it your could, blood drawn. Yeah. Testosterone levels. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's lots of ways to measure health. Mm -hmm. I actually put golf into this. You could too. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like a, it's an activity, right? I want to break 85 this year. That's, I would put that as a health goal. That's where it would right. fit. Right in there. And um, yeah, because it's just anything activity wise, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, Hey, I want to play basketball every week. Yeah. Like that's going to be the workout mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, for me health wise, I want to get to, um, 200 pounds, mm -hmm. at, you know, even leaner. I don't have like a defined fat percentage, but yeah, I know if I'm like right now I'm about 193. So if I get oh, to wow. 200, I'll be pretty freaking stacked, dude. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll probably be hitting them 400. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, so that's that's one. And then uh, golf-wise, mm -hmm. one of my goals this year is to play in a tournament. Okay. Why haven't you? Bro, because I can't win. Mm. I only do things I can win and be. Oh, okay. Like, I just know where I'm at. They don't have, like, tournaments at, like, so high. or like, They do. Yeah. But I want to play them. You don't want to play them? Well, no, I don't want to play. I have not wanted to play them yet. Yeah. I want to win. You don't think you're good enough to win those? No. Really? Like I said, I'm, I'm self-aware. Yeah. I sound like, you know, but I know where I actually stand in hierarchy. Oh, uh, okay. What's your, like, what do you shoot right now? I mean, my handicap's a four. Okay. I would think in order to win, I'm going to have to get down to like, so Shane, who's yeah. in the program, yeah. is like, he wins tournaments. Oh, really? He's a minus two. So he's basically six Ooh. strokes better. Yeah. And um, it's funny because Shane, him and I just actually did the first ever Wealthy Golf podcast. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to be out by now, but um, teaser. And we were just talking about uh, just everything. And he was like, dude, you got better at golf than anyone I've ever seen. Like yeah. faster. Yeah. And I go... <laughs> He yeah. didn't believe in you too, also. No, he did not believe yeah. in me. I remember at your birthday party, or I think it was Olivia's birthday party, he was like, dude, I don't know why golf is, or why Ryan's hitting into that net. It's not gonna work. Like he needs to, I think I told you that yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, and so I'm gonna beat him for sure. So I remember he uh <laughs> just to give context, so Shane was one of the original 10 students with Brian uh -huh. that met at my house back in 2020 when we started the program. And um at the time he had 10 rentals and now he has 60 today mm. he's crushing it and uh just a great friend of mine we're both avid golfers he grew up his whole life playing golf he played at notre dame mm -hmm. he is the definition of a golfer mm. and um him and i uh we bet and stuff too so we have fun yeah. when we play but yeah two years ago this guy's talking smack he's like bro mm. i did not ever want to invite you to golf anywhere because you suck and i was like <laughs> All right. I'm going to like, I'll take that. I'm yeah, going to take note that. of that. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> and then he saw me like six months later and he's like, the heck? Yeah. And I was like, I didn't forget what you said. Yeah. And I go, I'm going to beat you one day. <laughs> and he goes, you're never going to beat me. Oh boy. And I go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to beat you in the championship. <laughs> That's so high. Yeah. I'm going to take the trophy yeah, and yeah. we're going to, I'm going to replay it. <laughs> And it's going to get filmed by Austin yeah. <laughs> and everyone's going to see the shame. <laughs> so funny. I hold grudges. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. So, how, what does it take to get minus two? Like, from I mean, anyone, anyone listening would be like, it's like the chasm is so, I guess to put it in real estate perspective, let's say that becoming a scratch golfer is the equivalent of um, getting to like multi seven figures of, you know, income profit yeah, yeah. a year. Right. Yeah. That I would say that 
that's probably equivalent. Oh, really? Um, I'm just totally making this up, but that seems right to me. Let's <laughs> <laughs> the only di- the only difference is for most people they got to play their whole life to get there. Mm. So yeah, to do what I did to play, I have yeah. no experience, and to get that good that quick would be the equivalent of. I don't know, somebody going from like zero to making 10 million in year three or something. Yeah. That's yeah. what it would be. Okay. Um, that's why he didn't believe it. Mm. Now, that being said, how do I go from that to that? Because it keeps getting harder, right? Because as yeah. we know with flipping houses and like yeah. Herman Offer, for example, yeah. to go from, to get to a hundred deals, obviously super hard. Yeah. But to go from a hundred to 500 is just a totally different yeah. beast. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. That's the, that's where I'm at. Yeah. And what is it? Is it your short game? Is it? It's not your driver, right? No, it actually is my driver. Really? It's too inconsistent. Mm. Like, yeah, when I bomb it, it's great, yeah. but I lose too many per round. So it's like if I'm hitting out of bounds, I you know twice a a round. Yeah, which is normal for me. That's two to four strokes every round. Uh, and okay. so if you think I have like a six stroke gap. I need to fill. Yeah. Well, fixing the driver is literally the easiest one. Mm. And Shane knows that too. So once I fix it, he's toast. All right. Uh huh. So that's one. Um, yeah, short game. I need to improve. I mean, Mm. putts and short game, but look, I mean, to be truthful, every golfer needs to improve some aspect of their game. Yeah. My strength is that I literally hit it further than everyone. Yeah. Like even pros by a lot. Yeah. So if I can just straighten it out, then I have an advantage that no one else has. Yeah. And so that's great. From there, if I'm so much closer than everybody, I do need to improve my approach shots because, dude, I got to get closer to the hole yeah. on that second shot mm-hmm. because I need to be putting for birdies in order yeah. to get to the next level. Got it. So I need to improve everywhere, but if I had to really put a thing on it, I would say I need to improve my driver and my approach shots. I think those are the two easiest things. Yeah. What did you? Because if my approach shot is good, mm-hmm. I don't need a short game because I'm on the green. Yeah. I don't, I'm not chipping. Yeah. And also for everyone listening to this, I just broke a hundred. So lessons that's are there. available. That's there. You know what yeah. I mean? And um, did I but, play off the red tees? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a. Was it a scramble? Yeah. But yeah, still. Yeah. Did we play best ball? Yeah. We but had a few cares? mulligans, but it's yeah. not. I still did it. <laughs> but. When you went, you went to Titleist, right? Did they teach you anything? Did they tell you anything that you're like, I did not know this or. Oh yeah. A lot. Yeah. Um, you know, he broke it down the same way. He goes, you know, Ryan, what's your goals? Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to be the best celebrity golfer. That's literally always been the goal. Yeah. Nothing else. And, um, he goes, okay, whatever, dude. Like he didn't know. Mm -hmm. He's just like, all right, I just want to see before you hit this, before I hit a ball. Yeah. He's like, just tell me your goals. Everyone has a different goal. Yeah. He's like, all right, I don't even know who this guy is, so how's he going to be a celebrity? Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, Mm -hmm. so we ended up uh, hitting, and, you know, he's tracking all my stuff, and Mm -hmm. we're hitting and everything. And he was basically like, hey, dude, you know, we got good news and and bad news. And I was like, okay, (laughs) well, what is it? And he's like, okay, the good news is you have the one thing nobody else, you just can't teach it. He's like, you have club head speed. You literally swing it faster than everyone. What is it? Club head speed. No, I know, but what is your club head oh, speed? Oh, I don't know what the clubs... I never look at that. I look at the ball speed. Did you send me the graph? Um, I sent you the tour averages, yeah. Oh, okay. That what I sent yours. you was a tour average. Got it. Okay. But yeah, like so my ball speed on the driver, I mean, I hit it anywhere from 185 to 190 if I'm really juiced up. Yeah. The tour average is 167. Okay. Um, big hitters like Rory, that's where they're at. They're at they're at the one ninety. What is Bryson? He would be above that. He, like two hundred. I don't know what he's in game situations because he can ramp it up way higher. Yeah. But to be like consistent, yeah, he's probably I would guess like one ninety also. Okay. Um, and maybe I do need to ramp down. Maybe I do need to be at like 175, 180 mm-hmm. to get consistent, but I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying yeah. to freaking <laughs> max out and like <laughs> look cool. So no, so he goes, dude, you got the one thing people can't teach. I mean, it's just, you have club speed and like, you can't teach it. Yeah. And he said, and, and I guess the way to relate this to the audience is like, dude, if you're a pitcher and you throw hundred miles an hour, like you can get away with a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're seven foot, you mm-hmm. can get away with a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. 
So that's kind of like what that means. Yeah. The other thing you brought up was the other good thing you have, and people don't really understand this, is you have really high ball flight because you hit it so hard. Mm. And yeah, you do hit it super high. It's r- crazy when you're there in person. You're like, holy crap, <laughs> this looks unreal. Yeah, because and the reason it's weird to you is because amateurs can't hit it high. You're just yeah. not strong enough. Yeah. But if you go to a tour event, like that's, well, it's not as high, but still yeah, I've everyone, never, everybody. I've with some good people and I've never seen it that high, that fast. Yeah. Like you could hear it yeah. in the air. So <laughs> it's whistling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he goes, the reason that's important is because, because it's coming in so high and so steep, you're going to stick greens. Uh, and he goes, people who hit it low, the ball rolls, rolls and yeah. Yeah, they get more distance because they're weak. They yeah. have to. That's yeah. the only way to get it there. Got it. He's like, but you can stick it. And so, you know, you're not going to have the problem they have where if you are close and it's a fast green, because when you start playing tournaments, they make the green super fast. Mm. And they all have the problem, the ball rolling off. Got it. I won't have that problem. Okay. So those are my advantages. He goes, here's the disadvantage. He goes, your short game sucks. Needs work. Um, really? You know, after we did wedges and stuff, like I was yeah. getting better, but he's like, it's, it's definitely not up to par if you want to be what you're yeah. saying you want yeah. to be. Yeah. I go, okay, I can work on that. And then Shane was like, I actually don't think your short game's that bad. That's what Shane said. The only compliment he's ever given. Okay. <laughs> Trying to be nice to you because he already knows. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I actually don't believe him. Maybe he doesn't want yeah. me to get better at the short game. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> he would do that. I don't, <laughs> I don't put it past him. So anyways, uh, but he goes, you know what I think you have is a mental problem. Mm. And I go, interesting. Why? He goes, because every single ball you hits to the left of the pin. Mm. And he's like, I told you to hit it. Like, why did you keep hitting it left? And he, so he explains to me like the dynamics of the swing and like, you could see all the path and all that. He's mm-hmm. like, your path is going left. He's like, but if you just simply, Oh, so he did a drill. He goes, Hey, I want you to close your eyes. I mm-hmm. go, okay. He goes, point to where you think the pin is. So I point. Mm-hmm. And he goes, look where you're pointing. I look and it's left. Mm. And he goes, that tells me it's a mental thing. You think you're pointed at the pin, but Mm -hmm. you're actually just pointed left. You're hitting it where you're pointed Mm. and where you're lining up. You just mentally don't understand that that's not where the pin is, even though your eyes are telling you it is. Okay. So then I started trying to hit it right of the pin. Mm -hmm. And what do you know? It's freaking straight. Mm. And so it's a mental thing that you just have to get used to. Okay. I got a lot to work on. I could yeah. go all day about it, but yeah. People That's are crazy. like, all right, dude. Yeah. Move on. But uh, that was all the wealthy. What, what's your health goal? Health goal? I want to break 85. So... I know that, but what else? Well, that's most important. So <laughs> <laughs> I just, that's going to take it all. Well, no, I'll tell you the funny thing you asked me like, so what do I got to do to hit it 300? Yeah. And I was like, bro, there's a lot. Okay. One, your swing a wet noodle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You sing, you swing a newspaper. <laughs> so until you could swing faster, you can't yeah. hit it 300. You go, how do I swing faster? Well, you got to actually work out. Yeah. I started working out. <laughs> so I want to bench 225 12 times. So I used to be able to bench 295 and I just completely fell off. <laughs> so, well, you became a runner. I became a runner. Um, I do want to run two miles a day. Um, I have started benching again. I could bench 225 one time max. That's where I'm at right now. Do you get a spotter? I do get a spotter. Who spots you? Some lady at the gym. (laughs) (laughs) I just asked her to be there. Dude, that's so funny. (laughs) So like my gym's at my house. And so I'll post the videos of me puppet. They're they're like, dude, you don't have a spotter? Yeah. I'm like, nope. Yeah. Freaking don't do this at home, baby. <laughs> but um, yeah, so running two miles a day, I want to bench 225 12 times, and I want to break 85. No, I think it- I could do it. Well, I know I could do it, actually. I know I'm going to be I'm gonna be better than Javi. Watch. Watch. Whoa. I'm better than Brandon and Aaron already, and they've been golfing way longer than I have. So I know. I don't, I don't know that I agree with any of those statements. <laughs> <laughs> They've been golfing longer, Brandon and Aaron. Oh, I know they've been golfing yeah, longer, but yeah. I, I don't know that you're better than them. No, I will get better. Well, I, we're, we're going to play on Saturday, so I'll let you know. So what, you think one yeah. day you beat them so you're better? No, but I just think, I think I'm going to get good at golf. I know I am. All right. And I think I'm going to be Javi for sure, unless he keeps getting better. 
which he could, which I hope he doesn't. But <laughs> <laughs> every time we play, I try to feed him drinks. I'm like, dude, do you want a shot? Do you want a, you want a margarita, dude? You Just look, like, you look yeah. a little tense. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I want to break 85 this year. So we'll see. That's right. that's like a big goal. Yeah. Of mine. No, that's good. I, and I got my blood drawn. I got my blood drawn. Yeah. And um, I actually did, went to 10x health. Okay. I got my blood drawn. It takes three weeks for the doctor to see you, but yeah. Um, so I want to see what they're going to say, and I really want to. Oh, they haven't. In. Um, they haven't told you the results yet. No. Yeah, okay. but I got it drawn, and I want to see what they're going to say. But I do want to take my health way more seriously. Yeah. Not just like, you know, eat yeah. whatever. Yeah. This year is my year of discipline. That's that's my biggest reflection of 2023 is I wasn't disciplined. Mm. I used to be extremely disciplined with like my time, with what I ate, with how I spent money. I spent a lot of money on dumb crap this year. I just wasn't like paying attention to yeah. a lot of things. So 2024, I want to go back to being disciplined. If mm. I were to reflect on 2023, what happened? I'll tell you too, for me, I'm, I've always been a disciplined person. It's just like a matter of how extreme I want to be at a certain point. Yeah. And I can tell you the moment I started taking my health seriously, I mean, you guys saw it, my intensity and like drive started just going to another level. Yeah. Where I'm like, I'm not tolerating this crap anymore. Yeah. hundred percent. It's all that. Yeah. So the other thing I want to bring up, so we just talked about how to create wealth goals. So by yeah. the way, guys, if you're following along, you're still here almost two hours in, you're awesome. Number one, but mm -hmm. I mean, I track them literally in the Wealthy Way app. So yeah. if you just download the Wealthy Way app right now, if you didn't do it before, well, no one will know, but you should have. You should have just took my word for it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, download it now. And there's a couple other components to it that I want to bring up mm -hmm. that allow these goals to be hit. Because this, here's my big problem, dude. What most people do, they get all excited. They're like, dude, I'm going to go and write my goals down this weekend. I'm going to mm -hmm. go hike do some cool thing and yeah. write down my goals and mm -hmm. I'm going to go uh, freaking buy a board at Hobby yeah. Lobby and yeah. glue some up. pictures on it and <laughs> <laughs> make my vision board. And I'll be like, I remember when I was 15 too. So <laughs> let's figure out how to actually do it. Yeah. Okay. So I ended up creating this app for mm -hmm. daily accountability because guess what? You want to hit a goal, you need daily accountability. Mm -hmm. For me. I do this every single morning within the app, mm -hmm. okay? It's just part of my morning routine. It literally takes five to 10 minutes. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. So if you go through the app, like right now I will go through the app and, um, you know, just show you guys. So first thing you're going to create is your daily habits. Mm -hmm. What are daily habits? Well, these are things like literally I want to do every single day that if I do these, like my life's going to be good. Yeah. You know, these can somewhat be tied to the goals we just talked about, but man, these are just good habits you want to create. So if mm -hmm. you're struggling to work out mm -hmm. daily habit, mm -hmm. 30 minutes of workout, hour of workout, whatever that looks like for you. Um, and I, my daily habits over the years have changed many, many times. If you're mm -hmm. struggling to say, Hey, I want to read my Bible every day. Mm -hmm. This is where it would be. Mm -hmm. Did I read my Bible? Did I pray? Mm -hmm. You know, did I practice golf today? Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be a great golfer. You think you're just going to be good because you said, I'm going to break 85. Yeah. The secret, the law of attraction. <laughs> I will be a good golfer and manifest it. No, you won't. You'll still suck unless you practice every day. So um, basically my three daily habits this year are number one, tell Mindy I love her. Mm -hmm. the re this was like a habit I did like three years ago to give mm -hmm. context and then I was like, I got this down, dude. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell her I love her every day. This is great. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, at some point I lost the habit. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I didn't know I lost the habit because this is just what happens with like, if you're not reminded. Mm -hmm. And um, one day Mindy told me, she was like, hey, I used to really like it when you tell me, you know, you love me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you, because basically what I'm doing this in the morning. Mm -hmm. So when I look at it, I'm like, Oh, well, I might as well just knock this out. Yeah. And so I send her a text, mm. you know, like a good morning. She she sleeps in. Yeah. You know, I'm sending her this text at like five in the morning, like, hey, I love you. And then I'll like write a, a cool little message. Mm. I do that every morning. Mm. But it's not because I'm just like the best husband ever. Yeah. It's because the Wealthy Way app, guys. So if that <laughs> download the app. 
If that's not enough to download <laughs> yeah. the app, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. But that's literally what I do. From so the bottom of this video. <laughs> if you want to be a crappy husband, yeah. don't get the app. <laughs> so I I literally I have to mark it every day. Mm. Did I do this? Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, freaking, I'll just do it right now. Boom. Yeah. And so I do it. Next one. Did I practice golf? And by Dang. the way, I um I write this as yesterday. So somebody once told me, they're like, hey, why wouldn't you just put it um, for, what's it called? Like today. Yeah. And I've gotten that question a few times. I'm like, because I do this in the morning. So obviously I haven't done any of them yet. Yeah. This is the first thing I'm doing. Mm. So I want to know whether or not I did it yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I want it first thing in my mind, knowing that, hey, I still got to do this stuff today. Got it. So yesterday, did I practice golf? Well, that's a big X. I didn't. Mm. <laughs> I was a bad boy. That's why I can't beat Shane yet. Okay. And then my third one for this year is pray as a family. Mm. So every day I want to pray as a family. Yeah. And so the way we do that is at night before I put the kids to bed, I'm like, everyone, let's all get together. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Got it. And so those are my three for this year. I've had other ones along the years of like, hey, don't eat sweets Mm. because I was getting a sweet tooth. Got it. Um, That one would fail a lot again. So maybe I might have to add it again. But mm. nonetheless, um, you know, like, or stick to a diet, one of those two, right? Yeah. Like, hey, did I stay on my diet? Mm-hmm. Well, I got my fitness pal. Like, did I hit the goals in my fitness pal? Then yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next three things. I write three things I'm grateful for. So today, I'll just tell you, like, this is literally mine today, mm-hmm. just so people know. Um, I'm grateful that my voice is healed. There I've had know. a jacked up voice for... Two weeks. It's still like not a hundred percent, but it doesn't hurt yeah. to speak the way it's been the last two weeks. Um, I said I'm grateful that we're just like safe from that car crash and like mm. there hasn't been any, you know, problems. And mm. I've probably been writing that every day since just mm. because like I think about it and I'm like, man, dude, I'm super grateful that that should have been way worse. Yeah. Than it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um and then today, people will find this out later. I'm like, I'm grateful that I'm buying Mindy a Hummer. Oh. So, <laughs> that's literally what I'm doing today. So yeah. like right after this podcast, I got a Hummer at MSRP. Uh-huh. So I'm really psyched about that because they were like 50 to 100,000 over yeah. for like years. Mm-hmm. And I just got one at MSRP. So I'm hyped about that. And then um, next thing is journal. Mm-hmm. Journal is free to use however you want. You could write mm-hmm. like, your goals, like your task, Mm -hmm. you know, things that, uh, your feelings. I honestly write out prayers. Uh. And the reason I write out prayers, because I like to pray in multiple ways, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, um, speaking audibly or in my head or writing. Yeah. And I also think it's going to be cool one day that people are going to have this Mm. and they're going to see what I was thinking about and what I was praying about. Got it. it. Back in hindsight. And they're gonna be like, dude, he was going through that during that time and it led to that. Yeah. I think someday one person's gonna pull this stuff up. Got it. That's what, uh, you know, random. So then um, the last thing are weekly goals. So the app automatically pops up every um, Sunday. Mm-hmm. Hey, what are your three goals this week? Got it. That are going to get you closer to, you know, your yearly goals. Got it. So I'll tell you my three goals this week. Mm -hmm. We haven't hit any of them yet. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Today's Wednesday. So we got some time. Um, I said, Hey, I want to hire three new salespeople. Okay. They keep asking. You guys need to figure it out. Okay. Hire three today. (laughs) Okay. Hire three today. We'll get it done. I want to get Hiro styled in. Okay. That's one of my goals this week. Okay. And then I want to get our main dashboard fully completed for everything. All three are attainable. Yeah. They should get done this week. Got it. That's it. Just super simple weekly goals. Who is the biggest celebrity golfer? Because you said that, and I'm trying to think, like, who are you? It's chasing? Curry and Romo. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what their handicaps are? Uh, they're probably both, like, scratch or minus two. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're probably the same range. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So, I know last year when we ended the oh, podcast. And, and by the way, let me just say this, too. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the goals that we did create for the year, they're actually – right below this on the app mm-hmm. and you get to fill it in per month. Like, mm. so, Hey, I said, I wanted to um, hire five coaches. How many did I get this month? Oh, I hired a new coach this month. Yeah. Um, Hey, I wanted to, uh, 
you know, donate this much money. Here's how much I donated this month. Mm. So like you're tracking your goals in the app too. Yeah. So yeah, want to make sure people know that. Um, but last year when we were ending the podcast, I was like, all right, like we were talking about faith and then you were talking about how you went to a um, men's retreat and you felt like God told you to um, spread the word more. Um, do you remember what, what it was exactly? Your question or what that no, happened? The, the experience. On the men's retreat? Yeah. Yeah. So this is essentially how the wealthy way started. Um, this was in 2021, probably like July. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've been going to this retreat for like five years plus mm-hmm. in a row. And it's basically like three days in the wilderness with yeah. the men. And, you know, you have um, <clears throat> fellowship and sermons and music and... Mm-hmm. You do man stuff, shoot guns and freaking <laughs> punch each other, punch each other and <laughs> just do cool man stuff. And you could, you know, you could get a tent out there. I get an Airbnb, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, next year, if I go up in a Hummer now, people yeah. are going to respect me. So <laughs> and I'll sleep in the Hummer maybe. <laughs> so, uh, no, anyway, so I'm up at this retreat and at the end of the last, you're going to love it next year when you go. Mm. So the day, uh, it's in Brian Head. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we ended up, um, you, you spent an hour on the last day just going out into the woods by yourself. And everybody just scatters. And they're like, just spend the time with God and just listen, pray, mm-hmm. bring your Bible, read, just do whatever you feel like mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit's calling you to do. And so I'm just sitting out there. Honestly, like I don't have any expectations. I'm just like, hey, mm-hmm. life's pretty good. Like, I don't know. What do you want me to do? Mm-hmm. And so I'm just sitting there. And then I feel like this thought come into my head about, you know, people have the wrong idea about like what the actual priorities of life are. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at this point you've helped a lot of people in real estate. Yeah. But, you know, I'm starting to get all the questions about just life. Yeah. And I'm like, huh, okay, that's weird. Um, And then just like out of nowhere, just like this idea just becomes like super vivid. And, you know, there's like all these people and, you know, basically what I, what I saw was me on stages and like on calls and other things, just teaching people like how to live life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really also bringing the gospel with that Mm -hmm. to people because so many people, Um, you know, they got money and they're still miserable. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, I already know the problem. They don't have the Holy spirit. There's nothing that can fill the void. Mm -hmm. You can try it with drugs. You could try with money or status or whatever, but it will never fill the void. So I was like, man, dude, I need to figure out how to get it out there with Mm -hmm. like the situation and everything that I'm in. And, um, I was like, how would this is like, basically think time now, Mm -hmm. how would I do it if I was? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I probably like could create a community and Mm -hmm. maybe I could charge for it because my mind's thinking in business. I'm like, maybe I'd charge for it. I'll like create a course and a curriculum. Maybe we'll like have an event. Maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, we'll like develop these um, things nationwide. And like, I don't know, like, Mm -hmm. and the more I thought about it, I was like, yeah, you know what? This is actually a really big opportunity. Like yeah. people need like this, the, the audience for this is massive. It's mm-hmm. not just real estate. It's everybody. Yep. And I was like, man, I bet you this could be bigger than everything I've got. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, this is going to be a great business. I wonder how I should start it. And I was like, what should I charge? And I was like, just like doing ideas. And I was like, man, as I just went through it, I felt conviction and God was saying, no, you're actually going to just do all this for free. Mm-hmm. and I want you to do everything you just said you're going to do, mm-hmm. but for free. Mm. And I was like, all right, well, I got a lot of stuff going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like free, free? <laughs> yeah, like how, when does this need, what's the due date? Yeah. And uh, I was like, okay, I guess I'll just go to work. And so I remember Justin Barry was coming back with me. I go, and I asked everyone in the car, I said, hey, what did, God tell you Mm. during your time. And he had something and other people had something. I was like, all right, Justin, well, my something involves you. 
just mm. so you know. So um, <laughs> this is what God told me to do, which in turn means you're going to have to do this yeah. and this and this and this. And so I gave him the idea of the wealthy way, mm -hmm. which it didn't have a name or anything, but I go, but I'm going to teach people how they need to live their lives mm -hmm. and how to make money and how to actually bring God into their life, how to be great parents and mm -hmm. husbands and wives and uh, take care of their health. I'm going to teach them how to do all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know how, but uh, first thing I'm going to do is write down how I think you need to live life. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to package it and I'm going to make a course. That's where you come into play. I'm going to need you to edit the course and <laughs> yeah. do it and all that. So anyways, I wrote out the outline for the Wealth Builder Academy. Mm -hmm. You know, I created the branding and the name as time went on. I realized about, you know, wealth goals and all that. And, um, you know, at that point, it was always a faith-based thing. Mm -hmm. But I knew that at first I wanted to make it accessible to everyone. I didn't want it to be an overtly Christian mm -hmm. thing so that even if... You know, because like there are people that immediately will dismiss it, mm -hmm. right? It's the same tr is true as WealthCon. It's mm -hmm. like WealthCon is, there's a lot of Christian elements in it, but it's not advertised as, hey, this is a Christian event. Yeah. You know, there's lots of people who cuss and do stupid things on stage. And like, yeah, it's, it's, it's just this interesting thing that there's mm -hmm. not many places like it. And mm -hmm. um, anyways... I end up creating this course and this curriculum and um, literally the website. Like we didn't have the mobile app at the time, but I created the desktop site for mm -hmm. this planner. And um, I launched it at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, guys, surprise, it's free. There's no upsells. No, it's hard to believe because I want to sell everyone something. Yeah. But there's literally <laughs> no upsell. There's nothing. You're not going to get an email from me. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. And yes. like 30,000 people downloaded it mm -hmm. that month. Mm -hmm. And I got so many messages mm -hmm. after like, this was what I needed. This was amazing. I realized I now need to get back to faith, you yeah. know, like, and that was my number one objective with it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, going into 2022, I realized that, you know, hey, people want a mobile app. So we mm -hmm. developed the app. I realized that this wealthy thing was going to end up becoming the brand of mm -hmm. everything. So we went through a rebranding. Um, I ended up taking the course and turning it into the book. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we get at the end of 2022, you know, so a year ago today, and I'm having a meeting with everyone in our Bible study because we take December off. And I'm like, hey, so what do we want to do for Bible study in 2023? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we take it up another level? Like, let's start to plan out some events and trips mm -hmm. and just different things we want to study together. Mm -hmm. And as we started talking about all these things, it became again clear to me and like God just said it. And he was like, you're going to go take this everywhere. Mm. And I was like, oh man, all right, here we go. Mm -hmm. And I want people to know like, that's not like my initial reaction is usually not like, dude, let's go. Let's just like, mm -hmm. It's always like, oh man, okay, this is going to be a lot of work. And I like already start to think, I'm like, it's not that I'm like resisting it. I'm just like, okay, what do I need to do? And I'm like, all right, we're going to need a pastor. How are we going to train these Bible study leaders? How are we going to create the curriculum? How are we going to schedule these trips? What are we going to do? And um, sure enough, <laughs> what's the name going to be? It mm -hmm. doesn't have anything. How are we going to, do we want to charge people? If mm -hmm. not, how are we going to fund it? What's mm -hmm. the deal here? Mm -hmm. Within the next day, I already wrote the entire business, you know, as I thought about it. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, we're going to launch probably in the middle of the year because we're going to need to do X, Y, Z first. And mm -hmm. it's exactly what happened. We ended up launching Wealthy Kingdom because mm -hmm. I just felt like now was the time. Wealthy Way was the way to kind of like lead people in the door and then Wealthy Kingdom was the thing of, mm -hmm. I guess it was the upsell <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of like eventually, mm -hmm. you know, a uh, year and a half later yeah. of saying, hey, but this is actually what I want you in. Mm -hmm. This is that community aspect mm -hmm. that maybe this didn't have. This is more of a philosophy and a way of life and content. This is the community. Yeah. And it's interesting, interesting too, because I might be one of the closest people to you around here. And it still took me so long to go through the funnel <laughs> of like, 
getting saved and all this stuff. So I don't even think you'll see the impact, like the mass impact that you'll have for like another year or two. Oh, it year, took me forever. Years. Yeah. It took me forever. And yeah. I think I've been the example of how to live the unwealthy way. <laughs> the unwealthy. <laughs> I wonder if there's another way. I should make a podcast. The unwealthy way. where The I, broke way. Yeah. Where I, uh, I put money first before my family. Yeah. I freaking have held grudges. Like, you know, my... My mom and I didn't get along for a long time because I just didn't forgive her for stuff. Yep. And um, now, I don't know if I told you, she has cancer right now. You and, didn't tell me uh, Yeah. And I just like, just anyway, so held on to that for, for no reason. And at the end of the day, it's like my fault. And I do, I think I am going to speak about that at WealthCon. Like, if there's something you're holding on to, just let it go. Yeah. And after I let it go... I was just like, what the hell was I thinking? Like, mm-hmm. why did I hold on to this for so long? Yeah. And um, so I've done all the opposites of the stuff that you teach. So I'm just excited. And this year, like every year, I've always been like, dude, I, I'm, I've am i I've made a lot of money, but I like feel unfulfilled. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't get it. Like, I'm just like, I'm flipping this many houses. I made this much money. I have a beautiful dog. I have a beautiful cat. I have a beautiful (laughs) house. I have beautiful kids. And I'm still like at home miserable. And it wasn't until I started going to church that it filled that hole. And even though you've said that forever, I just didn't listen. Mm -hmm. So I know there's a lot of people that are going to they don't hear it because even today I, I invited one of the team members upstairs to church. Uh-huh. He was sitting there. I was like, dude, why don't you come to church? And he was like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, well, come. And I was like pressing on him. And he was like, you know, no one's ever invited me to church. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you've worked here for years. <laughs> <laughs> you've worked here for years. I, I, what do you mean? So that's, that's what I think is going to happen. In the next year or two, you're going to see more and more people that are they didn't know what wealthy stood for. Or yeah. They didn't even know we had wealthy kingdom. There's people in All Star who don't even know we have wealthy kingdom calls. Yeah, and you're just like, bro, are you alive? Like, how do you not see yeah. what's going on? So I'm excited for that. But the question was, do you have the spirit telling you anything else for 2024 that you should focus on or do? Um, you know, we've talked about this in Bible study a lot because. I mean, I could go about it in a few different ways, but I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. So sometimes as entrepreneurs, actually not sometimes, many times, we want to be in control, mm-hmm. right? Well, that's the exact opposite of what God wants. Mm. God wants to be in control. God wants you to submit and be obedient to what he's calling you to do. Mm. And so a lot of times we make decisions that align with our will, even though we think, oh, this is what God wants me to do. It's like, no. You're just kind of like justifying your action saying, oh, well, you know, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so people will then inevitably ask, well, how do I know if it's God's will versus my will? How do yeah. I know like the mm-hmm. spirit is speaking to me and it's not just my thoughts? And I'll say, well, you know, how much time are you spending with God? Mm-hmm. Right? Because if you're not spending any time with God, you're not praying, you're not in the word, you're not, you know, um, going to church, you're not in Bible study, like, My guess is he's probably not speaking to you very loud. Mm -hmm. It's not rocket science to figure that out. My guess is probably your own head that's Mm -hmm. speaking to you. And my guess is there's probably this other guy, Satan, who's speaking to you too. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not hearing from God and you're hearing other things that you don't think are from you, you're very well listening to Satan. Mm -hmm. So, you know, nobody wants to think that, but that's actually the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. So you know, these guys are obviously in Bible study. So I'll say, okay, you know, you guys are doing a lot of the right things. Great. Mm -hmm. So how do you know if it's you versus God? Well, there's a simple like smell test you can use. Like if you have an idea and uh, you're not sure, well, does this align with God's word? Like he's already given me his word. So Mm -hmm. if it doesn't align, I can probably pretty easily dismiss it. Right. Mm -hmm. So if God, or if you have this idea, you're like, look, you know, I think God is calling me to just leave my wife. Mm-hmm. And, you know, your wife's a Christian and mm-hmm. 
all these things. And we'll be like, why? Well, you know, uh, there's this other girl. Yeah. And I think she's the one. I think I actually like made the wrong choice early on. Mm. Like, I don't think that aligns with God's word, bud. So I don't think that's from God. We can easily dismiss that. Yeah. Um, so like easily dismiss things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, another one would be, okay, what, what would godly counsel say about your decision? Mm -hmm. Somebody you can actually trust and give you true, you know, godly counsel and unbiased feedback, not tell you what you want to hear because you can always go around asking until somebody does tell you what you want to hear. But what would a true, you know, mentor tell you? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do, what do they think of that idea? Have you asked, mm-hmm. right? So there's lots of things you can do to figure out, hey, is this actually from God? Mm-hmm. Now, the hardest part is when you're doing those things and you don't hear anything. Mm-hmm. Now what? What does that mean? To me, that means one of two things. One is that, I've already told you what to do. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing it. Yeah. (laughs) Which is basically don't get shiny object syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like Ryan, yo, I told you to build wealthy kingdom. You know how hard that's going to be, dude? Mm -hmm. I don't need you to do anything else, bro. Mm. Just do that. And I'll tell you when you're done. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. The other one is, okay, you're not hearing. Well, guess what? You're in a season of waiting. Mm. Because it's not just always go, 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 Mm. action, action, action. And we think that as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, well, dude, I don't have any, dude, I'm just going to go do something. Yeah. People don't know how to sit still and receive. And so you might be in a season of waiting and testing and God saying, I'm going to see how long this dummy runs around with his head cut off (laughs) before (laughs) he actually takes a breather Mm -hmm. and sits and listens. Mm. And guess what? Do you think like the first time you ever pray, you just get instant revelation? Mm -hmm. You might, but you might not. Yeah. And how long are you willing to sit and wait for the word before, you know, you finally get it? And once you get it, how long does it take you to actually go act on it? Mm. Because I've gotten the word many times. And in most cases, I've been able to act on it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. But I know many people who've gotten a word and they knew they should have did it and mm-hmm. didn't do anything. Yeah. And Brandon Turner and I actually talked about this, um, last week. Um, he was in Vegas and he was, um, talking about how he had this vision from God to have Tebow and Ed Milet speak at his conference. Mm-hmm. Right. And so he got Tebow mm-hmm. and, you know, he was like, dude, like, you know, I just kind of like got self-conscious about trying to go get Ed and, you know, money became a thing. And, you know, I know lots of people that know him, but, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't want to like ask for favors and everything else. Right. Mm -hmm. So then he told me this crazy story that, you know, that same week he had just finished the better life conference and, you know, it was good. And, um, all of a sudden his guy, I think it was Stetson is walking out Mm -hmm. and, He's going to get a coffee and look who's in the coffee shop. It's Ed Milet. Oh, wow. Right there in Vegas at the same hotel. Mm. And Stetson's like, hey, dude, like you got to meet Brandon. Like he's, mm-hmm. you know, you guys would love each other and yeah, blah, blah, blah. Right. And then Stetson tells Brandon and Brandon just like broke down, convicted mm. because God basically had told him, dude, I gave you this vision. He's in the same city right now on that day. Yeah. You know people that know him. He would have easily just walked in there for 30 minutes. Yeah. Same hotel. Mm -hmm. Like, what are the odds? Yeah. And you were too prideful to ask for help. Mm. And it convicted him. Mm. And him and I talked about it. And uh, it's interesting because like even a guy like him who's so high level doing so many great things. Yeah sometimes is disobedient out of pride. He didn't want to ask for a favor. Yeah. And he goes, dude, you literally told me, he's talking to me, him and I were rooming together in Jacksonville like three weeks prior. And he was telling me like, yeah, I think I might want to get Ed for the event. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, like I can, you want me to text him right now? I literally said that. We're just, it's like 3 a.m. Yeah. I was like, dude, I'll text him. 
and I'll see if he'll do it. Mm-hmm. He's like, nah, dude, don't worry about it. And I was yeah. like, all right, whatever. Yeah. And then he's in the same hotel, same day, could have walked in. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, he texts me that next morning. I didn't know all this went down. He's like, dude, can you make an intro to Ed? And he's mm-hmm. like, um, I just feel convicted to reach out. And uh, he's like, you know, at, at this point, there's nothing else. Like, I'm not asking him for anything. Like, yeah. I, I now see that my pride was stopping me. Mm-hmm. And so anyways, I texted Ed and I was like, hey, dude, you got to meet my friend Brandon. He's the man, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then boom, they're introduced. Mm. And it could have been that simple yeah. the whole time. Yeah. And that's what people do. And this is what people need to realize in 2024. It never goes away no matter who you are. It could mm-hmm. be me, Brandon, Ed, you, somebody just getting started. When you hear, especially as a Christian, from God calling you to do something, many of us are like, are you sure you said that? <laughs> you sure about that? I don't know if you said that. They might have been something else. Yeah. I might have misheard. Maybe that was Spanish. Okay? Yeah. I don't speak Spanish. Or... You heard, and you're choosing to be disobedient because mm-hmm. you're like, I'm scared. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to work out. What would happen if they did say yes? Or what happens if they say no? What do we do? Like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That is literally the opposite of walking in faith. Faith tells me that I take a step not knowing what's going to happen. Yeah. I go because I expect you know, great things to happen mm-hmm. because this is what God's calling me to do versus people who walked in let's say fact, mm-hmm. need every little detail yeah. mapped out. Mm-hmm. That is not walking in faith. You just know how it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a lesson um, for everyone to hear. I don't, he'll probably tell the story on his own podcast, but it's, uh, it's relevant because, um, you know, we were talking about him here and he's a great friend, mm-hmm. but even guys like him still yeah. struggle with hearing and knowing you're hearing it Mm-hmm. And then God ends up, if you, if you are disobedient, God always has a way to remind you that, yo, mm-hmm. that could have been you. Mm. Yeah. I think, um, two things. One, now that I'm like new in the Christian world, I'm just surprised by when I hear of stuff like that. Cause in my mind, once you're Christian, you're like perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Even when you told me, uh, we were talking in your office the other day and you were talking about someone in your Bible study, how you like walk them through, I think the discipleship six month thing. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, Oh, like I thought they were always Christian. Like I, I'm surprised they like, that was the first time they're doing this or they were struggling with that. Like, yeah, I just thought they had it all. But, um, so what, you, what, so what are you saying is like in 2024, you are being called to just do to, you know, keep working on wealthy kingdom. Among other things. Yeah. I don't have any like new revelation have not like I've already said it all. Mm. Just go out, grow wealthy kingdom, mm-hmm. get as many Bible studies as we can get good at digital marketing. Cause I'm mm. going to need the skill for growing wealthy kingdom for yeah. everything, everything else that we're about to do. So mm-hmm. that's it, dude. I'm just keeping my head down. I'm focused on mm-hmm. those two things and you know, the rest will take care of itself. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. But dang, dude, this is a long one, man. I haven't done a two hour in a long time. There we go. We might have to let Brian back on. There we go. Um, like at least two years from now. <laughs> so anyways, go follow Brian's podcast because we got to get him to, uh, what was the download goal? 100,000 a month. That's a big goal, dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> do it. Okay. It's going to happen. Well, let's get a million. Well, that's basically 100,000. All right. Yeah. 100,000 a month. That's what he needs, guys. Um, and we got to get to 10 million downloads next year. So I need a million a month. There we go. So make sure that you subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Nobody anticipates losing money when they go into business. The only reason I was able to get through losing a couple million on bad flips is because those three things can never be taken away from you. Your money, your real estate,